Hey guys, congratulations on the purchase of your Flat Printer 3 CNC machine. I'm Mark Carew and this is my wife Trish. Hey guys, welcome to the Flat Lab. In here we prototype, work on cool projects, and film the build log videos for the Flat Printer 3. Trish and I are the owners of Flat Boys LLC. And our goal is to provide you with inexpensive quality tools to allow you to bring manufacturing into your workshop. Before we get started, we'd like to talk to you about some of the features and terminology that we'll be using throughout the build log videos. Here we have a completed flat printer 3 that we'll be using for our demonstration purposes. In the video, we walk you step by step through the process, one part at a time, assembling every component and part until you have a completed unit just like this. Not only that, but we walk you through the steps of actually using the software until you're cutting your own parts. By the time you complete this build, you'll be up and cutting. The Flat Printer 3 kit and build log video is broken down into steps. So let's explore the Flat Printer 3 and cover some of the terminology we'll be using throughout the build. The Flat Printer 3 is a true three axis CNC machine. In essence, it's a robot that has three axes of movement. CNC simply stands for Computer Numeric Control. All that means is that you use your computer to control a machine. There are several different types of CNC machines, various styles and formats for their axis and the way that they run. This machine has the X axis, which is the roller axis. This moves your material back and forth. We have our y-axis, which moves the gantry side to side. And we have our z-axis, which moves the spindle up and down. Our spindle on this particular attachment is a flex shaft. Our motor's housed back here. The bit is down here. The way the Flat Printer 3 works is we use these three axes in combination with one another to cut out our designs. It's the combination of these three axes that allow us to create shapes not only in two dimensions, but three dimensions as well. The pressure roller system for the X axis works by simply inserting a sheet of foam, lowering the pressure roller onto the foam, and this will allow for the roller axis to move this material back and forth. What's nice about this feature is that this machine takes up a very small footprint in relation to the size of material that it can handle. Another nice feature is that we have removable face plates. If we disconnect our flex shaft and our vacuum, loosening these four knobs allows us to remove the entire face plate. Each faceplate consists of a key system that locks into the key system on our Z-axis, which travels up and down. This adds a new dimension in that we can create several different faceplate styles to house several different tool types. If we turn the machine on, you'll hear the stepper motors lock into position. The axis can no longer move. We have the ability to jog the machine using this number pad. We're jogging our x-axis out and back in. We have the ability to jog the y-axis back and forth and our z-axis up and down. So we have our x, our y, and our z. Just to do a sample air cut to show you how the machine works, I'll run a bit of code. truly see how it is like a robot. Just moving to the next position of your design. Now we're just trying to cover some of the features and terminologies that are used throughout the flat printer build. We have our pressure rollers, our roller axis, which moves the material back and forth, is the X. Our Z-axis moves the, the bit up and down, and our Y-axis moves the YZ gantry combination back and forth. This is our spindle motor back here, leading through a flex shaft to our, to our bit. 
This is our what we call the spindle attachment, this face plate that sits on the Z. In the future, there will be several different attachments that you can choose from depending on the projects that you're trying to accomplish. All these axes are moved into position using stepper motors. Stepper motors work different in that they step to position. You can set how many steps it takes to get a full 360 degree revolution of the motor shaft. And depending on the gear ratios that are involved, it will move the axis to that point in the time frame that it should. As far as the number crunching goes to figure out the step pulley ratios, you don't have to worry about any of that. The software takes care of everything. We have a built-in feature that allows you to calibrate each axis. The way it works in the software is that you assign cut lines where you want the machine to cut and how you want it to cut. When that's complete, the cut lines are generated into a code that the machine understands as X, Y, Z coordinates. And those coordinates are sent out to the controller card, which powers the stepper motors and moves your machine into each one of those positions. And that is how you're able to cut out complex shapes and create unique designs. So that's a basic overview of the CNC machine and how it works. Uh, as you get into the build, and certainly when you've completed the build, you'll have a, a much greater understanding of how it works. And as you develop along with the machine, you'll start to understand how it can open doors and allow you to do so many things that were not possible before. So I hope this helps out. If there's any more questions, remember that a lot of people have already built the flat printers. They understand the concept. If you have any questions, we urge you to go to www.flatforum.com, P-H-L-A-T-F-O-R-U-M. That is our support forum for the flat printers and all Flat Boys machines. Any questions that you might have, just go on there. There are tons of free plans and examples to go by. Also on the Flat Boys support disk, you'll find a lot of examples and tutorials as well. So we encourage you to jump in with both feet. Um, once you're bitten by the CNC bug, it's hard to let go. I mean, you're always going to want to modify and change things. And that's the beauty of this machine and the ability to remove parts and add parts and cut out your own parts is that we're going to be able to create all kinds of customization and modifications to these machines. And it's just going to be great to see what comes out of it. The concept behind the Flat Burner 3 was allow for multiple removable attachment faceplates so that we can attach different tools for different projects. As we move into future developments of the Flat Burner 3's attachments, we're sure that you're going to have ideas of your own for different attachments for projects that you're working on. Throughout the entire build, you'll notice that the majority of the construction is made up of either tabs, which stick out like this, or slots. The slots usually, but not always, have a recessed hole in the center, but not on the back. And the way that works is these tabs basically fit into the corresponding slot where they're supposed to go. You can see here. And that keeps our parts all aligned. I just want to go over this because the majority of the build is done this way. Now you'll notice that each set of tabs has a cross section. That cross section is for your small square nuts. And the way that works is they sit right in the cross sections like you see here. Now we run a small piece of tape to hold that nut in place while we're working on the part. And you'll notice once you do that the nut stays in there, you don't have to worry about it. So now, if I take this and install that, we now have metal threads from that nut to screw into. If we run our screw in here, you'll see that it lines up. We can take our drill and tighten it down. And with the fact that this being recessed, it keeps our screw head nice and flush. Just wanted to go over that as an overview because throughout the build, anywhere you see a cross section like this, you're going to want to put a square nut and some tape on. And we try to tell you that throughout the build, so just wanted to give you a quick build note on that. Alright guys, so enjoy the build block videos and we look forward to seeing your completed flat printer 3s. Let's get started!
next up we're going to start the spindle attachment. You will need only your wood parts and some parts out of your any and all bag. There will not be a separate components bag for this step. The reason why we're working on this now is that we want the glue to have time to dry so when we install it on the flat printer 3 everything will be nice and dry and tight. Okay, so what we're going to do is take parts A1 and A2, this is part of the spindle attachment, and we're going to add glue and glue them together like this. You'll notice they have a recess here and here. And once they're on top of each other like this, you'll notice there's a hole here. That will later be our clamping bolt we'll go through there. So let's go ahead and get some glue. And I'm just going to apply it here to A1. And you can... I just barely have the tip open. Just try to stay out away from the holes and also out of that that recess area here. But try to get this front. And this glue will penetrate down into the MDF and really make it strong. Now I'm just going to take A2 and put it on top. What I like to do is move it around a little bit, pull it off, put it back on there. And do your best to line those up. Make sure that all of your edges are even. These tabs are going to insert into a uh, slot later, so you want to make sure that they're all even and that all edges are even. And then we'll set that to the side to dry. Okay, we have A3 and A4 here. You notice the recesses, once again, one's going to go on top of the other one. Doesn't matter which one, just as long as there's a hole there for our locking nut for the spindle. So we're going to go ahead and just put some glue on there. Make sure you cover all the areas again. Even these tabs back here. Okay, and I'm just going to place A3 on, A4, wiggle it around a little bit, pull it off, got a good even coat. Make sure all your edges are even all the way around, like we did on the first A1 and A2, and then we'll set that to the side to dry. Okay, on this step you want to get A6 and A7. You'll notice that we have the recess here on A7. And basically, it's going to sit right on top of A6. And when you look at it from the other side, this is what it looks like. Um, even to the front, there's actually a space here in the back. The tabs protrude for A6. So it's going to sit just like that. And I'm going to take that off and put some glue on A7. Stay off of the recessed area. Doesn't matter if you really get a little in there, but that looks good. I'm just going to flip that over right on top. Now, on this particular one, I'm going to flip it over so I can see it a little bit better. Um, you just, like I said, you want to keep this front even and these sides even. Uh, let me spin it around so you can see the back. We don't care about this because it's going to sit flush against the faceplate. So it is supposed to be offset just like that. So these are even. That's even. And once you get that in position, set that to the side to dry. Okay, on this step, you want to get your A5. You'll notice it has a long tab on the bottom and a short tab on the top. And also you want to go bit back and get your A1, A2 combination, which we have here. And what we're going to do, it, the glue should already be set up. It only takes a few minutes, but it's not completely cured, so don't wiggle it too much. But I went through and just cleaned a little bit of the glue out with my finger. And I'm just going to take that long side of A5 with the two tabs facing the back here and slide that right down in between the two. And it just sits in there loosely. So just uh, put that together. This step, you want to locate A8. This is what it looks like. Right now, we're looking at the front of the spindle attachment, facing this way. And A8 basically sits right on top here. So go ahead and put that together. 
locate part A9. This is what it looks like. It's the back plate for the spindle attachment. You'll notice that there are recesses on one side. On the back side there's not recesses. So look a little closer there. We have these recesses for the screw heads. So what we want to do is flip that over so the recesses are facing down. And we're just going to pick up our assembly here. Insert it into these corresponding holes. And this is good to do while the glue's still a little wet. And you'll notice back here there's actually room for this to, to come out because there's actually another piece that goes in there. But these tabs come all the way through and that's supposed to happen. Okay. Okay, on this step we're going to go ahead and install the square nut and tighten these parts together with the uh, with the screws. So what you want to do is locate three of the square nuts and three of the screws, machine screws. And you'll notice the T-shaped tabs here. You're just going to slide the square nut down in there like you see. Put the screw in through the back and then we'll tighten that down. You can use a screwdriver or a drill. But if you use a drill make sure you're on a low setting because you can crush it. As soon as it snugs, you're done. You do not want to over tighten these or you'll you'll break the wood here. So as soon as it's snug, it's done. The way these parts fit together, you don't need to over tighten them. Now we have two more slots here and two more screws here that need to go in. The only thing is they're in the center. So I'm putting my finger behind here so I can catch this when it falls down. And I'm going to go ahead and push the screw through, try to align it, and tighten that down. Just snug. And this one needs to go down a little bit more. Just snug. And you can look at it. If you have a warp here, like I do, I've, oh, I over tighten this. And I know I over tighten this one a little bit. See it kind of back right back out of there. That's pretty good. Okay. Let's move on. Okay, for this assembly, we have A3 and A4 combination. Uh, we have some tape, two of the square nuts and two of the screws. And I'm just going to take a little piece of tape and put it across here because it's going to be a little more difficult to get to these screws and what I'm going to do, you notice, you want when you install this, I'll show you how it's going to go it's basically going to sit right in here and if this middle notch will line up with this notch here this will slide down and the one thing you want to remember is that the hose, li the hose hole, vacuum hose hole, lines up with the vacuum hose hole and they're to the right like you see in the video here so now that we know how it goes, we're going to take a couple of the square nuts and slide them in here. And we're just going to slide that in place. It might take a little bit of wiggle, wiggling to get it to go where you want it. There we go. Push that all the way back. And it should stick out just like that one. And like I said, you want to do this while the glue is still a little wet. And we'll take our screws and insert them into the back here. Just going to put them both in for now. And we'll tighten those down. And like I said, just snug them. If you find that what happened with mine here, the screw fell, the, the nut fell too far down, you might have to remove that tape. There, that one went in. You may have to remove that tape and push it up a little bit. Or angle the screw here. Okay, that's good. They both hit. I had to angle one down. Now, one thing to keep in mind here, the reason for these recesses is that the screw heads will go flush. You don't want to go too far you don't want to go too far past flush. Just where it's just snug and I, I really can't stress that enough because I've built enough of these to know that you can warp the plate if you go too tight. Okay, let's move on. 
On this step, we're going to take uh, A6 and A7. These are the last two. You see we have the corresponding slots here. They're going to line up just like this. And when that goes together, you're going to create a vacuum chamber that you'll see it down in there. And so this only has one screw, one screw, one nut. The nut basically sits right in there. But it is a little difficult to get together. If you want, you can sand this edge a little bit. But as long as the glue's still wet, usually you can force it in there. I usually start at an angle and then try to work it in. It's a little difficult when you've already screwed those parts in. I'm just going to push it down. Okay. Make sure everything's lined up. Okay, and go ahead and insert the screw. The nut is already in there. Kind of sandwiched in there. You just feel around, try to find a, the a hole to start it, and, and there you go. That looks good. Now, one thing I do want to mention here, it's very important that these stay together. So, if you have some clamps, you may want to clamp this and just hold it in place. Of course, this last part did not get glued in, but it doesn't matter. You can put your clamp here, or you can just put tape across here. So, I'm just going to take a little bit of the scotch tape here and put it across there. I'm squeezing this together, pulling the tape, and just putting it on there. So when this glue sets up, I know that this will be tight and together. Then the same thing on the opposite side. And I'll do it down here as well. Just to hold it in place. Okay, now, now we can set that to the side to dry. On this step, we're going to be working on the Z axis. It's the plate right behind this spindle attachment. It moves up and down, and that's what we're going to get started on. Okay, on this step, you want to locate the six Z1 parts. You'll see Z1 times 6 if you focus in on here you notice the one has uh, doesn't have a bottom to it so you'll start to recognize what it looks like but that is a one basically what we're going to do on this step is we're going to stack these up and glue three of them together like this and three of them together like this and we'll create our spacers so I'm just going to start applying glue to them and wiggle them together make sure it goes on there good we'll go through and glue three at a time together I want you to take notice of the Z2, how you'll notice around this big hole, there's a recess, a slight recess. Um, there's not one on the back. And the reason for that is so that the Acme nut will slide down in there flush. So that's the side we're going to be working with. So go ahead and insert the Acme nut into that part, and you'll see that it sits flush. You want to take two screws, slide those into the two hole, outside holes and place one of the nuts on there and go ahead and tighten that down now just get it don't actually don't tighten it real tight just get it in position right now so it holds the screw in place and do the same thing with the other one just takes a few turns really but one thing I want you to notice is we need these square nut to be basically flush like that because this is an anti-backlash acme nut and you want this to be able to move up and down with the spring 
So go ahead and tighten that down once you get those square. One second. Okay. Just holding it with my finger. Now you might, if you have a pair of uh, pliers, you might need to use those there, but that's pretty good. And that's holding. And it allows the spring to move. Okay, that's good. Let's move on to the next step. Okay, for this step, you want to locate parts Z3 times 2. You can see them here. What we're going to do is basically where you see this slot here, it's going to insert into here. Just like that. And the same thing with this one. This is the part we're trying to build. Now, you'll notice that the long ends are opposite the top of the Acme nut. They're on the spring side. So seeing the way that goes, I'm just going to leave that one in there. I'm just going to take a dab of glue here and I'm, I'm basically just putting a dab of glue in that slot. So when these two go together, that'll be good and it'll hold. I'm going to do the same thing with the other one. And that's good. Okay, let's move on. All right, you want to locate part Z4 and four small T-nuts, you see here. Uh, I've kept the assembly for the rest of Z off to the side for now. What we're going to do is install these T-nuts into the recessed holes on Z4. The back side doesn't have the recess. So you'll notice the T-nut has a slight flange tooth to the inside. And if you push it in and spin it to the left, it actually will seat and lock in there. Now you can do it with your thumb. It takes a little bit of pressure, but just try to do, you'll see, you'll feel it try to turn as you're pushing it down. Okay, so when you're finished with the T-nuts on Z4, they should be flush, actually a little bit past the outside surface. All right, at this point, we're going to take our assembly that we made earlier with the T-nut, and we're going to basically glue it right onto Z4. You can see that we have sort of a plus sign there that lines up with this plus sign. Our back tab will line up with this tab. So we're going to glue that in place. Let's flip this over and add some glue to it. We're adding glue to all the flat sides that we know are going to touch. Of course the tabs that are sticking through the slots are not going to touch so we don't glue those. So that's basically what you want. All these lower flat sides. And let's go ahead and press that in place. You'll notice that the T-nuts are facing up. And that's what we're after right there. Now if these two come out while you're doing it, just wiggle them around and put them in place. And that's basically what you're after. Okay, let's set that to the side to dry and move on. Okay, for this step we're going to work on the Z bearing assemblies uh, for the Z axis. I already have three of them together here, partially. I'm just going to put those to the side and show you how you should put them together. Uh, you want to start off with a washer. Just slide it onto the bolt. Slide your U-groove bearing on. Slide your next washer on. And at this point, that's assembled. Our next step, once it goes onto the Z-plate, will be the next washer and then the bolt. So we'll move on to that step. All right, on this step, we're going to insert our bearing assemblies into the Z1 spacers that we created earlier. So you're just going to push them through. There might be a little bit of glue in there. Just push it through and clean the thread off a little bit. Push your next one through here. And set that to the side. And we'll do all of them this way. I got a, quite a bit of glue on this thread, so just clean that off a little bit, and let's move on. On this step, you want to get your Z gantry assembly, and the spacers, we just push the uh, bearings through. We'll line them up with these holes and push them through. Now, we'll take the other washers and slide those on, and we'll put the nuts on. We're just going to hand tighten them especially on this slotted side. We want this to be able to move in and out, like you see here, freely. Okay, let's do the other side. By the way, make sure that these are, these are facing in, these boat areas, just like you see there. And 
Now this side is not one that moves, so you can go ahead and tighten it down a little bit. Okay, this is what you should have. Alright, now we're going to work on the Y gantry. This part here, as a matter of fact, you won't be putting these sides on, however. Uh, it goes back and forth, left and right. So let's get started. Okay, on this step you're going to need your tape. You need two Y2s. They're unmistakable. They're very unique pieces. These are basically spacers for your Y gantry. And you're also going to need eight of the small square nuts. Just take some small pieces of tape and just tape right over top of these T-shaped areas here. Looks like you can actually cover ground better with one larger piece. It doesn't matter if it overlaps or anything like that. You can go back and peel this tape off later if you want. The idea behind it is to hold the nuts in place. So that's what it should look like. I'm just going to flip these over. It doesn't matter which side you tape either. And just slide those in there in the uh, corresponding slots here and that tape will hold them while you're working on the parts. It works out really nice. Okay, let's go ahead and move on. For this step you're going to want to locate Y number one. This is what it looks like. There's no recesses on it. Uh, you're going to need two of the small square nuts and your tape. Tape our T-slot here, here, flip it over and insert the square nuts and they'll stay in there. Okay, let's move on. Okay, we've brought back our Y2 times 2. You can see here we have our Y number 1 here. I want you to take notice that our large ta uh, tab here corresponds with the large slot and the small one at the top with the small slot. Same holds true for this side. So these are going to insert just like you see here. So what we want to do at this point is Take some glue and glue the flat spots. Hold this in place. Just needs a little dab because later it's going to be screwed together and it'll be nice and tight. And you can see I got a little bit on each uh, part there. I'm pushing that together. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and glue the other one. And when you're complete, this is what it should look like. Okay, for this step, you want to locate Y number 3. Uh, you can see that it has a recess on one side. Nothing on the back there. And with Y number 1, the plan is recess facing up. We're going to slide this right on. Like you see here, we have our large tabs or slots at the bottom. That's corresponding with our large tabs here. So I'm going to put some glue on the back opposite side of the recess. Just try to cover all the areas here and stay away from the ends of these little tabs. Okay, let's go ahead and install that. Let's just press that down firmly and move on. Okay, you want to locate Y4A and Y4B. And you'll notice that they have uh, recesses on this side. They're basically mirror images of each other. Um, you'll also notice that this tab at the top here, I'm um, slot at the top here, is bigger than this one here. And what we're going to do, the smaller one corresponds with the smaller tab that's sticking out. This is Y4A, and you'll see that it sits right on there. I'm just going to apply a little bit of glue, glue to the back here and glue that in place. Once again, I'm staying away from these outer tabs and just give it a little bit of glue there. Put that right on. We'll do the same thing with Y4B on the back side opposite these recessed screw holes. Just like that. Okay, let's move on. Go ahead and locate four long screws. Slide them into the recessed holes here. And we're going to screw this into position. And basically we're going to be going down through here into these nuts. Now you don't want to over tighten any of these screws so you want to give it a little bit of a run. You can watch it and as it hits 
this watch the head here and it actually I have to put my drill on low again you might even want to use a uh, screwdriver for this but it tightens it down a little bit just snug it I'm going to bring this in it's hitting and oh I went past you can you could tell when you go past if the tabs are are pushing through Pull that out a little bit, and we'll do the same thing with the other side. And there's something I want to show you after this. You can see it's coming through here. You can see how it squeezed the glue out of here, so you can just take your finger and wipe that off. But that is good for now. Let's move on. Okay, for this step, you want to locate your part number Y5. This is what it looks like. You'll notice it has a recess on one side that will hold, hold a bearing. Um, you want to locate one of your small bearings and just place it into that slot, just like you see there. And you want to take a little bit of tape, tape over the T-slots here. Try not to tape over any other holes around the T-slots. See how... Trying to do it here just using really small pieces of tape. Use four of your uh, square nuts. Press them against the tape. You can see I'm pinching them. And that will hold them in position. Okay, set that down. Okay, for this step you want to get your small I-beam assembly that we have here. We did earlier. You'll notice you have larger tabs up here than you have down here. You have the smaller ones. This is actually the bottom of the part and that's where we're going to be inserting the Y5. Now I wanted to show you where that bearing went in a previous step but you should be able to bang it back out of there and then go ahead and install that. You have your small, install the Y5 here, you have your small uh, slots there that line up with the small tabs. So just get those aligned and then look at it from down here from the top view and kind of you might have to wiggle it but it should go on there okay so we have it on there we can put our bearing back in the bearing just sits in there and it free floats um, for our next step we'll basically just put one of our screws through here okay so we'll just take one screw and we'll put that in we already have the nut in there you can see it back there and then we'll slowly tighten that down now this one does not have a recess, so make sure you don't over tighten that. But try to get it lined up and and that should take care of that. So that's what your finished part should look like right there. Okay, let's set this part to the side now. Okay, at this point you want to locate Y6. This is what it looks like. I want you to take notice that one side is recessed. We have recessed screw heads here and the recessed bar here for our belt clamp. What we're going to do is we're actually going to flip it over so the recessed side is facing down. We're going to take some small bits of tape again and tape over the T-slots. Okay so we have four, five, six of them and what we're going to do is flip that back over and just press the square nut into the corresponding slots. Okay, you want to locate one of the small T-nuts. We're going to take Y6. This is a recess side. We're going to flip it over and we're going to be, uh, press the T-nut into the center hole and spin it to the left as it goes in like you see here. Now this one doesn't sit flush but that's fine. That's This is what you're after right here on the front. Just push it down until it sits semi-flush there and let's move on. I'll flip it over and move to the next step. Okay on this step you want to locate the bottom half of the belt clamp. This is what it looks like. It, it has uh, small tabs sticking out here and what we're going to do basically is glue this. These tabs line up with these holes and then the center hole goes through. It's going to sit on there just like that. So you want to take a little bit of glue and this is just a temporary hold Take a little bit of glue and just put a little bit around those tabs like you see there and just pre press that into uh, position. 
Okay. All right. On this step, you want to go back and get your your I beam, your small I beam, uh, with Y6. We're going to flip Y6 over. The plan here is to install this onto the uh, the back of this I beam, just like that. And you'll notice we have the two, the four tabs here that correspond with these four uh, slots here. All of our screw recesses are on the back, along with the belt clamp. And basically just push those together. Keeping in mind that you've just temporarily glued that belt clamp. so Just like that. Okay, on this part we're going to take Y6 and we're going to screw through these holes. Two, three, four, five, six onto our small I-beam. Take six screws, place them in the holes to get them started. And go ahead and tighten those down. Okay, that looks good. Let's move on to the next step. Okay, on this step you want to locate your two small Z-rods. And the plan here is, you'll notice there's holes in the bottom there and there's slot tracks for these to slide into and you'll see that they sit right in that track so the plan is to take some glue and glue those into position so what I'm going to do first is run some glue down the seam here Oops. and when you install these rods, you'll notice I stayed a little bit away from there on the end when you install these rods Make sure you do not turn them, just drop them in place. And then you want to line it up flush with this bottom hole. Just like that. Okay, this excess glue, let's wipe off. You're going to have to hold the rod in place and wipe it down. You might have to wet a paper towel. Our U bearings are going to ride here so you just want to wipe it off. Now that's not saying it won't come off later because it will. It's just harder later. That looks really good and I'm still flush there. You notice I was holding down here with my thumb to keep it in position and this excess is normal because our next piece that goes on top will hold it in place. So let's go ahead and we'll put a piece of tape on here to hold it in position while we work on the next side. I'm actually going to put a couple pieces. One down here at the bottom as well. And these are temporary. And we'll flip it over and we'll glue the opposite side and we'll do the same thing. This time I won't use as much glue. And once again staying a little bit away from that end because you don't want glue pushing through. So I start the rod in the hole put my finger back here so I can stop it and just set it down. Now that worked out much better. Wipe any excess off that you see. And double check to make sure you're flush here. I'm going to go ahead and tape this in place like we did on the other side. Okay, one other thing you might want to do, I've added a couple pieces of tape here on the bottom of where the rods come through. Just while we're working on it, we don't have to worry about them sliding around. Alright, I'm going to stand this up and let that set up a little bit. Okay, for this step, you want to go ahead and locate part number Y7. You'll notice it has recesses here, one for a bearing and three for three screw heads. And that's going to go right onto the top of this. We'll go ahead and you have these two larger slots here next to your two rod holes. That's where these all line up. So we'll start with those. Now you'll notice that our bearing recess is facing up. Do your best to kind of wiggle it back and forth to get it in position and press it down and that's what it should look like. And locate three of the screws and go ahead and put them in position because we can actually put this on. Remember don't over tighten them. Get them snug. Just snug. That's perfect. Okay, that looks good. You want to locate one more of your small bearings like you have on the bottom here. 
and just place that in top. A little bit of a tip, you might want to tape the bearing in place temporarily while we're working on this. You can also do the same thing to the uh, bottom bearing. Okay, that looks good. Let's move on. Okay, you want to locate your uh, felt. And basically this felt is going to help to keep your belt tensioned along the Y. And what we're going to do is, you'll notice this tab and this tab, the bottom of these tabs both line up with the, with or are in line, I'm sorry, with this uh, belt clamp. So you're just going to take this adhesive back felt and set it just like that. And you'll notice I'm staying more towards the bottom of this tab. I'm even with the bottom of the tab. You just peel the sticker off and stick it right on there. Same thing with this one. And I'll show you up close what it looks like. And once that belt's on that'll be that'll be nice and tight. Okay, so you see that I'm lined up with the bottom of this tab here, and it's basically in line there. With our belt laying in there, it'll be a nice fit. And these give just enough to add tension. All right, let's move on. Okay, for this step, you're going to want to locate your Y bearing bolts. Um, you're going to need 16 of the washers, four of your uh, bearings, and four of the of the nuts. Okay, so we're going to show you how to build your Y bearing blocks. You're going to take your bolt, slide a washer on, slide the U-groove bearing. This one differs in that the X, we only used one washer, this one's going to use two washers. We need more of a spacing here. Let's set that to the side with the rest of our washers and our nuts. Okay, on this step you want to locate Y8 times 2. In our previous step we built our bearing blocks. Um, we're basically just putting Y8 times 2 onto the bearing blocks, or the bearing blocks onto Y8 times 2. So you have two washers up against the wood there. And we're going to do the same with this other one. So it looks just like that. Okay, okay, okay. for this part we're going to install our bearing assemblies onto our Y gantry. You'll notice the top one here. The holes are just standard holes. Down here we have slotted holes. That's because this bearing assembly at the bottom is adjustable. We'll start with this top one. You can grab either one of the bearing assemblies. And with the notches facing away from the center, just like you see it here, insert the, insert the bearing block. Go ahead and put one of your washers on the back and then one of the nuts. Just hand tighten that for now. Um, do the same thing on the opposite side. One washer, one of the nuts here. Okay. Then you can go back with your wrench and actually tighten these down to hold them in position. Wrench and a pair of pliers. Don't over tighten them, just give them a good turn and they'll stay. We'll stay there. Okay, that's good. Let's go ahead and get our next bearing assembly. And with the notch facing away from the center, this is the center here, just going to slide it into the track. And I'm going to push it up against here so I can tilt it back. And go ahead and install the nut and washer on one side and do the same on the other. And then keep these kind of loose because you want to be able to adjust this later. So you should be able to push that up and down. And this is how we're going to lock this onto the I-beam. It'll ride like this. Alright, that looks good. Let's move on. Okay, let's go ahead and flip this Y gantry over and install the nuts into these T-slots here. We're going to use our tape and tape this with it upside down like you see it here. There's four of them. There's actually one over here. I'm going to flip it back over and just install four of the square nuts on there. And 
just sort of press them into place. The tape will hold them. Okay, looks good. Let's move on. Okay, for this step, you want to go ahead and remove the tape from the uh, the temporary tape we had holding the rods in place. Let's go ahead and take that off. If you have any excess glue, now's the time to get rid of that. Go ahead and scrape it, make sure it's clean. You can get a close-up of this. This looks nice and clean. And we'll go ahead and flip this over and do the get the tape off of this other side now as well. So our bearings will ride nice and smooth across there and that one looks good. Alright, let's move on. Okay, on this step you want to locate your Acme thread, a quarter inch lock collar, and a 332nd hex driver. You can go ahead and take the Acme thread and put it down through the top bearing. Before you get to the bottom, go ahead and put your lock collar on and slide it down into the bottom bearing and through and let it sit. Don't tighten up the set screw. Uh, if, if that was tight, make sure you loosen it so you can just slide this right through like we just did. And let's go to the next step. This is going to be exciting. It's coming together. Okay, for this step we have our Z gantry. We have our adjustable bearing block here. We want to go ahead and open that up. We're going to flip this over and just slide it onto position like this. It gets a little bit tricky here, but you can kind of look in here and push this, this uh, Acme thread into the T-nut, which is exactly what we're trying to do. And then you want to hang the edge over the table like this and just turn it until it gets all the way through there. Got to turn it by hand right now. Once it gets through, it runs a little bit easier. You can see I'm through now. And you can adjust this. Now, like I said, these bearings are free floating, so don't worry about that. You can spin your lock collars around. That looks fine. Let's just keep turning it until we're almost to that hole there. And we want to get our second lock collar and put that on. At this point, try to line it up with that top hole and go ahead and spin it a little bit more. Okay, that looks good. Our mission here is to get our Acme thread flush to the bottom there. You can do that just by simply moving this whole assembly now because we're tied into that T-nut. So we'll get that flush there. <clears throat> we'll take our Allen wrench and tighten this down. That looks good. And you notice we have some sticking out of here and it's out the top here and that's fine. Go ahead and push this lock collar up to the top and tighten that down. Now our gantry is locked into position. Our next step is to ensure that our U groove bearings are on the uh, rods here and you can turn this and move it up and down a little bit if you need to. I would get it kind of evenly spaced here and of course we have our adjustable side here so you want to squeeze that together make sure it locks into position and then just hand tighten those a little bit more wiggle it if you have to and take your half inch wrench and tighten them down now the idea is here to tighten them as evenly as possible and you don't really tighten them down very hard I mean you don't want to dig into the wood there so as you go around, keep in mind that you're trying to tighten evenly. And I'm just holding my finger back here on the back of them while I tighten this. And that seems to work all right. You might find one where you need the uh, pair of pliers or something on the back. Like this one here. Hold on one second. Let's have a pair of pliers here. I'll hold that in position 
why I make a short turn. Okay, now you can see by that, I did not over tighten them, but yet they're locked on. That whole gantry assembly is on there nice and tight. And yet it can still smoothly roll up and down, which is exactly what we're after. So that looks good. Let's move on. All right, on this step, we're going to go ahead and install the Z stepper motor. Okay, in this step, we're going to wire our stepper motor to our wiring block. Uh, so you want to locate that. You need a small flathead screwdriver for the screws. And you need your stepper motor and the ribbon cable. This is the Z-axis stepper motor, but the motor itself attaches to the Y gantry. So the first step, you'll notice on your stepper motor, you should have a sticker. And it has four screw heads, and it has the different colored wires. You have black, green, blue, and red. So I'm just going to take my wire block and starting with the black wire, insert it in, tighten it down, and work my way over. Now uh, you don't want to insert it all the way through, just on one side. Make sure you're in there getting tight. And we'll go next with the green. And some of you guys you might want to take your wire, just a tip, and bend it over like this into a loop, sort of. It makes it grab it a little bit better when the screw comes down onto it. And you have to pay attention when you put this in because you can push the wire too far in. Just when you look in there, make sure the wire is set on the screw. And this one, you can see, I pushed in too far, so I'm going to back that out. I'm going to put loops on all these. It's a lot easier to work with. Okay. And next color is blue. Again, put the bend in there. And finally red, which I'll bend right now. Now you'll notice, I'll put the red in now, you'll notice that the white and yellow wires are not being used. And that's right, they don't get used. You're, we're using this in what they call bipolar mode. And so we don't use these. I usually just wrap them up or cut them off. If you do wrap them up, make sure you snip the ends so you don't uh, get any type of a short on the motor housing. Uh, you could even heat shrink it or tape it at that point. Okay, so moving on. I'm going to take my ribbon cable, take one end of it, make sure you strip your ends like I've done here, and I'm going to go ahead and fold those over as well while I'm at it. I usually twist the ends first so you don't get a lot of these hairs where the wires frayed in all different directions. So something like that. And then copying this set of wires, we're going to do the same thing on with these. So black will go with black, green with green, blue with blue, red with red. Okay. They all look good in there. They all look good there. Make sure they're good and tight um, because this stepper motor actually moves back and forth with the gantry. So you want to make sure these wires are, are in there nice and snug. Okay, let's move on to the next step. Okay, on this step you want to locate your YZ gantry assembly, your stepper motor that we've already wired the block to, and you want four of your stepper screws and four of the stepper bolts. The first thing we're going to do is spin this around, come around to the back, and you'll notice that the wire comes out of one side of the stepper motor here. I want to face that to the left, like you see here. And the purpose in doing this is that our wiring will be able to wrap around to the block, which comes over on this side, and it'll take up some of that slack. So I'm just going to go ahead and install this into the gantry 
And you can use a uh, you can use a drill or a screwdriver to get this going. The screws are a little tight, so you might have to get a get them started with this drill. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and apply the uh, nut to the back of this, these screws. And you don't want to tighten these down yet because we want this to move back and forth. That's how we're doing our belt tensioning. So just go around and put the four nuts on these bolts. Okay, good. Okay, so on this step we installed the four nuts to the four stepper motor screws and that allows us to have the adjustment here we need for over here on the pulley so that it tightens it and loosens it. Okay, now our next step is to take our wire block and install it through this hole here. So you want to locate the small nut and bolt assembly and probably want a uh, Phillips head screwdriver for this step. All right, the easiest way that we've found to do this is to go ahead and push the screw through with the wires facing this way and push it up into the hole. You'll notice with a little pressure you can push that in even further. So push it in a little bit and if you come around to the side here you can see you just screw that in place. Okay, now that that's on, just make sure you straighten it so you're running parallel with the stepper motor. And what you want to take these wires here, the excess wire, you can tape it or, or whatever, but the idea is to get it up out of the way. And I usually end up putting it right up into here, which is hard to see, but there's like a little notch back here for the top of that bearing block. And you can usually push it in there. Good deal. Let's move on to the next step. Okay, for this step you want to locate the belt, the large pulley, the small pulley, and you also want to locate a 16th inch Allen wrench. And what we're going to do here is basically install our small pulley onto the Acme thread and the large pulley onto the stepper motor with the hub facing down. Just like you see here. So what I'm going to do for now, for right now is I'm just going to work on the small pulley. And you'll notice there's a, a set screw here. Keeping this flush against the bearing here, just push it down and from the front insert your Allen key and just tighten that down. Okay, now the idea here is to line up this pulley with the big, with the larger pulley. So Looking at the stepper motor, you'll notice the stepper motor has a flat shaft on it. So go ahead and rotate that into position. If you find that it's hard to rotate, you make sure that none of your wires are touching. Because if they're touching, you're basically connecting the coils and it makes it hard to rotate it. Once you, once you move them apart, you'll see it rotates freely. Face the flat side of the stepper motor towards you, towards the back of the gantry here. Locate the set screw on the, on the large pulley and line that up with the flat portion of the shaft. I'm going to go ahead and insert the hex head and then I want to look at it from the side and just see if I'm pretty much level across here, which I am at that point, so I'm going to tighten that down. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and put my timing belt on. And you can see now if I move this back it tightens up that belt. Now for now, if you want, you can go ahead and tighten these screws, you know, pull this back as tight as you can get it, and then tighten these screws down with a screwdriver or with a, uh, a drill, but I recommend a screwdriver. Okay, after that's complete, you can see the belt's tight. 
and if you turn this pulley of course it's going to lower and raise our Z gantry and once again if you have finding that it's hard to turn then you need to make sure that these wires are not touching <clears throat> if you can take the black and green wire and connect it just hold them together and you can turn this easily like right now you hear how it's making that sound that's good if you take them off it shouldn't make any sound uh, same holds true with the red and blue if you can touch those two together and they're making a sound then you know you have a good connection there if you take them off it should be free flowing and that sounds good that's just a good way to make sure that you got your wiring block connected correctly okay on this step you're you're going to want to locate Y9A and Y9B and you'll notice that they have a recess on a certain side here so I'm just going to face the recess over here up and let me move this wire out of the way and this recess up they're mirrored parts but um, A goes on the right hand side you want the recess facing out away from the gantry on both sides so we'll start with A, Y9A I'm just going to set this over on its side just like you see it here let me move this wire again and you'll see where the tabs on the bottom line up here and the tabs on the top line up here just press that into place you also want to get ten of the small screws push them in place and we'll go ahead and tighten this down with your drill on low just snug it okay so let's flip this over and we'll do the same thing Y9B once again just make sure that the recesses are facing out the screw hole recesses and you'll know you have them the right way just follow the picture here on these you'll notice that uh, I have to push the nut in a little bit so keep that in mind for these two side ones here alright that looks good YZ gantry assembly let's move on to the next step alright what we're going to do is attach the wire the ribbon wire to the YZ gantry and you're going to need your little wire clamp one screw one square nut let's go ahead and tilt this over and you can see we're looking at the left side and the idea that we want here is basically you want the ribbon cable coming out of the gantry system just like you see here we'll be able to adjust that later so you know get an idea of about where that is where that hole is and then you'll see that this kind of snaps in if you look close at the at that so you just I can see it's going to be right about here so I'm just going to snap that onto the wire we can slide it so. and then I'm just going to put a let me give it a little slack here I'm going to line it up underneath and put my screw in place let me give it a little bit of a start here if you come around to this side you'll see what's happening underneath there um, you can see how the it goes through there at the bottom as a matter of fact I'll turn this whole thing over you can see it a lot easier there you go and then I'm just gonna I have the, the square dot on my finger I'm just gonna place that on the back and tighten it up to the top doesn't have to be super tight okay so that's the concept right there the idea is that the wire is coming out 
basically, let me spin this around. Later this wire is going to lay in a track. So you want to try your best to keep it from kinking. Keep it all running one way. Pull it out. But the idea is that you want your wire running out just like this. Okay, so at this point, go ahead and roll that wire up if you unrolled it like I did. And set that part to the side, and we'll move on to the next step. Alright, we're going to get started on the I-beam. It's the backbone of the flat printer. You can see here housed are the guide rods that the bearings will ride on. So let's get started. Okay, on this step, you're going to locate I1, I2, and I3. And what we're going to do is anywhere we see a T slot here, we're going to go ahead and take. We're going to flip these over and insert the small square nuts. Okay, so we want to take I3 for now and set it to the side. And we'll work with I1 and I2. Okay, at this point we'll take I1. You'll notice it has a recess all the way across the entire part. Um, we'll have that facing up like we have it here. You take I2 and you see it has a small hole here, large hole here, and these large tabs at the top. I just want to lay I2 on here. You see you have four sets of holes here. One, two, three, four, all the way across. Uh, the ones we're concerned with are the ones in the middle, so they actually one, two, third row down. And you can see that the tabs line up there with those slots. They will not line up with these, only the center one will. So let's go ahead and tilt that in position. See how it looks. And let's go ahead and glue that now that we know where it goes. You'll notice that the tabs go all the way through like you see here. So, we'll keep that in mind. I'm going to get my glue here. Okay, I'm just going to glue across the flat parts here. Uh, this will help really strengthen the I-beam. You just need a little bit. Just like that. Go ahead and put that in. Now if you have that part flopped, you'll see that it overhangs too much. So, Okay, so push that tight so it's all the way through. And for now we'll just tilt this over. And we are going to locate I3. And I3 is also going to go through these tabs uh, the same way. So on with the long side tabs facing up, like you see here, put a little glue along the flat edge. Just like you see there. Now, making sure you have the small hole matched up with the small hole here on this end. Large hole to large hole on that end. Just flip that over and insert that right next to the other one. And it's fine that the glue is still wet and you can move it around. Now I'm just placing that flush on the table so I can work with it to move on to the next step. Okay, at this point you want to locate I4 times 2. They're identical. Um, this is what they look like. They also have a small hole and a large hole, and they also have the long tabs. What's going to happen is we're going to insert I4 into these remaining slots, and and the other one, other I4 into those remaining slots. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to set this to the side, and I'll put some tape and add the square nuts to them first. At this point, flip the parts over and add the square nuts. Okay, for this step you want to get your glue. And I'm going to take I4, and you'll notice that if we tilt this, the small holes here, this is going to be inserted underneath here, so we want the small hole on I4 here as well. So, just along the flat areas here, run a little bit of glue. 
I'm going to tilt this a little bit. The glue is still wet on the other ones. That's fine. I'm just going to push that in. You can see here. I'm going to do the same thing on this one. These are both identical parts. Small holes down here. We know the small holes down there. Run the glue. Tilt this. Okay, let's go ahead and insert that. If any of your parts come out, like one of mine just did, just push it right back in there. Alright, let's tilt it back over. Let that set just like that and move on to the next step. Okay, so locate part number I5. This is what it looks like. You'll see it has a recess here. Um, it has a fat part here and a smaller part here. And with the hole here on these on this I-beam so far, the small hole on this side, it will fit like this. Line up your tabs. Now if you if you accidentally tried to put it on this way, it wouldn't line up, it'd be cut off here and hanging over there, none of the tabs will line up. So you can only really go on one way. And let's do a dry fit, make sure everything's gonna line up. And you can see that's how it's going to sit. So now that we know that, we're going to take this off. And I'm going to put the recess part face down. And I'm going to apply glue to the back of this. And stay away from the tabbing out here. Basically, we just want a little bit of glue to help to hold that together. Something like that. And then we'll go ahead and flip this right over and place it right back on top, like you see here. Okay, for this step you want to locate parts I6 and I7. This is what they look like. Um, you see the fat part here and the skinny part here on the I-beam. we got the fat beam and the small beam. This finalizes the assembly of the, of the I-beam. They go on just like that. You'll notice that they have recessed screw holes. You'll want to keep those facing up when we actually apply them. Um, let's flip those over. Let's flip these parts over right now so the recessed screw holes are facing down. And we're just going to put some tape on the backs of these T's, cross T's, for our square nuts that go on the ends. Flip them back over. Insert them. Four of them. Okay, now we know where they go. What I'm going to do is, I have the recessed screws here, and since I want this to be permanent, I'm going to flip this over and put the glue across the back here. A little bit of glue here. I'm going to flip this over, so you're gluing the opposite side of the recess. Alright, I'm going to put this one on first. It's just like that. This one. I7. It's just like that. Alright, good deal. Let's move on to the next step. Okay, for this step you want to locate the I-beam screws. You notice they're longer than the normal screws. And we'll go ahead and just insert them into the holes. Get them started. Okay, let's go back through and screw these down. Remember, don't over tighten them. I just want to mention that these tabs sit a little bit lower and that's normal. Like I said, you don't want to over tighten them. Everything looks good here. Mainly they're there for added support to tighten the I beam together, but the glue will do the actual holding. All right, let's go ahead and set the I-beam to the side for now. We'll move on. All right, in this step, we're going to start the cabinet build. This is going to 
actually occur through a couple different steps as you get to a certain point and you'll you'll need to stop and work on certain specific aspects. Let's get started on the cabinet. Okay, let's locate part C1. This is what it looks like. You're going to need your tape. And just go ahead and tape all the cross sections. And we'll flip it over and we'll install those square nuts. Okay, for this step you want to bring your I-beam back in and what we're going to do is install C1 onto the side of the I-beam. I want you to take note that the I-beam, this fat strip here is the top, this thin strip is the bottom. Um, also, this, this side with the larger holes is the right hand side if you're standing in front of it and this side is the left hand side with the smaller holes. So what I'm going to do is just take the I-beam and lay it down. I have the large hole on the floor side. And you can see here, if I take C1, you'll notice C1, one of the sides has recessed screw heads. The other side does not. We want to use the side that has a recessed screw heads facing up. Uh, you notice that it's going to sit just like this. These unique shapes line up with these unique shapes that have been created with the tabs. And the idea is to work that part on. And it's going to take a little bit of doing because there's a lot of tabbing that has to line up. But you can wiggle back here and get them to work. And then if you have to pound it, pound it into place. And that looks good. Okay, on this step we're going to put screws in to screw the I-beam to the C1 cabinet side. I'm going to turn this a little bit so you can see it um, and kind of orient yourself. What we want to do is everywhere that you see that the I-beam is connected, you want to put a screw. And I'll show you the layout of those screws. Everywhere you see a tab, basically. Okay, so there's two, four, six, eight screws. And I have my drill on low. I'm just going to tighten those down. Okay, that looks good. Let's move on. Okay, for this point you want to locate the two long rods that came with your kit. Um, you'll need your, your tape and also your glue. What we're going to do is we're going to pick this up and set it on the table. But I'm going to hang this C1 over the edge so that I can set it flush. And we're going to run some glue down the tracks here. Now you want to stay away from this edge about a half an inch and, a, and about a half inch away from this edge with your glue. And just run a bead right down the track there. Doesn't have to be uh, real thick. But something along those lines. What you're after. Take your rod and insert the end through the hole that you see here on C1 and without spinning it because you don't want the glue to wrap around the rod get it flush to the outside edge of C1 and lower the rod in place okay everything looks good at this point you may want to take a paper towel and wipe a little bit of excess glue off but you could actually do that step later so let's just push this down in place We'll worry about cleaning the glue off later. And I'm going to take some tape and just put some temporary tape to hold that in place. Some of you guys might have clamps and you might think, oh, I'm just going to clamp that down, but that's not a good idea. This rod needs to set in the, in the uh, track, just set flush like it is. So we'll set that there, and actually I think we should let this set up for a little while before we flip it over to do the other side. Okay, we're going to insert the other long rod into the bottom side of the, of the I-beam, so I'm just going to rotate this right over. Take some glue. Remember, stay about a half inch away. The bottle actually works as a good stop on that side. And run some glue down the tracks. And we're just going to lay it in the track. Remember, try not to twist the rod or the glue will wrap around it. 
feel on the outside here so to make sure you're flush and lower that in place that looks good and we'll tape this one as well I'm gonna set this back up like this and I'm just gonna let this set and dry go ahead and take the I-beam assembly with C1 on the side and move it to the side while it's drying. We have C2 here. Um, we're going to go ahead and put some tape on all the cross sections. Okay, you'll also notice that this one has recessed screw holes as well. Flip that over. Let's put the nuts in there, cross sections. Um, you'll notice that we have the recesses facing up. You also want to locate eight of your small bolts and eight of the small nuts. <clears throat> and you see that we have small holes here, small holes here, four of them. These are for your circuit boards. Um, we're basically creating a mounting uh, stud. So you're just going to take one of your bolts, push it through the hole. One of the nuts, put that on. And tighten that in place. You could take a Phillips head screwdriver and tighten that down a little bit more. We're going to go ahead, go through, add these four and these four, and at the end we'll show you what they look like. Okay, so when you're finished, this is what it should look like. We have our four bolts here, four here. This will be for our driver board. This will be for our USB controller board. And we'll move on to the next step. Just make sure that your recesses are facing up the same way that the bolts are if you look in there. Okay, it looks good. Let's move on. Okay, let's take our I-beam assembly and bring it in. You notice how I have it set up here. Um, Basically we're going to take C2 here and lining it up like we did with C1 with these shapes. We're going to have to wiggle it to get it in position. And if you have to sand any of these tabs, go ahead. But you should be able to get it on there. You might have to bang it a little bit. Okay. That looks good. Okay, so we'll screw all the recessed areas that you see here. Just snugging it. Okay. That looks good. Put it up on the table. Starting to come together. Let's move on. Okay, for this step, you're going to need your stepper motor one of your wire blocks and a small flathead screwdriver. <clears throat> You'll notice once again I have the white and the yellow wrapped away from the rest of the wires here. We don't need them. Um, we'll look on the stepper motor. We need to go black, green, blue, red. So just going to copy that same same routine. You'll see here I have my wires already twisted. Now I'm just going to bend them in half make the loop and I'll do this for all the wires. So let's go ahead and hook this up according to the color codes. Don't push it too far in otherwise you're just going to tighten down onto the onto the um, insulation of the wire and that's no good. I'm just going to go through and put these on now. Okay, so this is what you should have. It should match up with the colors that you see on the stepper motor, which it does. Make sure that you don't push the wires in too far, otherwise you're just going to tighten the screw down on the insulation. Alright, let's move on. Okay, you want to locate your short ribbon cable. 
and we're going to match up the colors here and tighten down each one of these installing this cable onto the other side of the wire block. Red with red, blue with blue, green with green, black with black. Okay, once that's complete, you want to look at all your connections and just make sure that you're on the, the actual wire. If you have any loose connections, you might want to back them out and redo it. And <clears throat> a good way to test it is we know that black and green are one coil. So make sure your wires are apart and spin your motor. It should spin freely. If you connect the black or touch the black and green together, you should, it should make it really hard to spin, and it is. We'll take those apart, and we're going to touch the blue and red together. That makes it hard to spin again. So with them apart, it spins easy. As long as that works, you know you're good, and we can move on. Okay, let's locate part C3, C3A times 2. It's both of them there. And on all the cross sections, we're going to put a piece of tape, so we can... In Insert the square nut on the opposite side. Okay, that's good. Okay, you want to take C3. I've taken C3A times 2 and put them to the side for now. Um, you want your stepper motor, your four stepper motor screws and nuts. And if you look at C3, it has recessed holes for these two screw heads. We're going to flip this over, and you have to take note that of this square hole here. Make sure your part is sitting like we have it here. We have this small hole here that is going to be used for our wire block, and then the wires will run through this hole. So set your part up like you see here. The recesses are on the bottom. And then take your stepper motor and set it right on top like you see here. I'm going to flip that whole assembly over and this is what you should have. Take your screws and insert them into the stepper motor holes. I'm going to spin this over so you can see what we're doing. And I'm taking the stepper motor nut and just putting it onto the screws. Don't tighten it all the way down because we want this to be loose so we can work with it. Okay, so I have them on there but they're loose and you can see we can move that back and forth. So lay this down like this and we'll move on. Okay, you want to bring C3A times 2 back in these two pieces here. You'll notice something on these two pieces. We have a larger tab on the bottom portion than anywhere else and that corresponds with these slots here and also these slots here. Whoops. Just like that. So we're going to put that in place right now. Actually on the, on the one on the right hand side it's easier if you feed this wire through right now. Wire all the way through with the wire block as well. and then you can arrange the wires like you like. I leave the yellow and white one here. Same thing with the other one. I'm going to flip that over, insert the two screws, and tighten that down. Okay. So at this point, this is what you should have. Okay. Okay, we're going to install our wire block into this hole here. You want to take your small screw and nut assembly, place it through the middle hole on the wire block, and place that on into that hole. So push this screw down in here. So you can get a little bit of the threads, if you can see that coming out, to insert your nut onto the back. 
And right now I'm just holding it in place with my finger while I'm trying to turn it, tighten it down. Okay, so I want to straighten this out a little bit. And then feed these ribbon wires through, back through this hole. Like you see here. This is what you're after. Okay, let's move to the next step. Okay, we have our stepper motor assembly. I've got three hardware screws and my drill. And we're basically going to install our stepper motor assembly onto the side of C2 here. And I'll show you as a dry fit what it looks like. This tab here lines up with this tab, these two with these two, and of course the top ones will line up with the top two tabs. <clears throat> now it takes three screws. Uh, we have one here, one here, and one below here. And if you come around this way, you'll see where the screws actually go. Just put them in place. And then I'll snug those. Now since this side's not recessed, you don't want to, you just be careful because the screw heads have an angle and you don't want to accidentally over tighten them. But that looks good. Let's get another shot of this from this side here. You'll see we have our motor that can move back and forth. I straighten up the wires a little bit. I put some tape on them and just shove them down the side here. Um, you could bring them around this side if you wanted to, but I would keep them out of the front because this stepper motor needs to be able to slide forward for our belt tension. Okay. Okay, you want to locate IP1, 2, 3, and 4. And in this initial step, we're going to prep these parts with uh, putting the tape on the cross sections to hold the nuts in place. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, for this step, we'll go ahead and take IP3 and IP4 and set them to the side. We're concerned with IP1 and IP2 and the two small bearings. You're just going to push them right into their holes there. Okay, locating the rest of the hardware, we want to get the medium-sized pulley, free pulley axle, and the spacer. And on IP1, just put the axle into the bearing. Make sure it's flush on the bottom there. Put the pulley with this hub side and the set screw down. And then put your spacer on top of that. Now, making sure that you're pretty well flush here, you might want to spin this around to the back side so you can tighten down this set screw. 564 hex. Okay, that's in there and it's spinning good. I'm going to take IP, let me spin this back around. I want you to take notice here, IP1, the way it's sitting, you'll notice I have these tabs over to the right hand side and the tabs centered here. IP2, we have to flip over so that the bearing is facing down. And we want that same tab configuration, tabs over here, tabs to the right set that right on top. So if you were to look right down on that like a sandwich you would see that these tabs line up, these line up, these they all line up. Basically just like that. Now get IP3. You'll notice it has a recessed side. We want the recessed side facing out and it lines up with these two tabs here. Let's work those in. Like you see there. IP4 also has recessed screw holes. You want those facing out. Line those up on the opposite side. We'll take four screws and tighten that down. When you're complete, this is what the part should look like. Now I've rotated the flat printer housing around. 
I'm on the opposite side of the stepper motor now. Okay, on this step you're going to want to locate six hardware screws. And what we're going to do is install our free pulley assembly onto the side of C1. And you'll notice that these two tabs here, these two tabs here, they line up with these two tabs here. If you start there, the rest should line up. Pushes in just like that. Take your screws, and if you come around this side, you have one that goes here. You have two that go here. You have one that goes here. So those four right there. We'll, we'll tighten that down. Once again, this side is not recessed, so the heads do stick up a little bit on these, so be careful with it. Okay. As a matter of fact, over tighten one of these. It's pulling it off. Let me loosen this up just a little bit. Okay, that's better. Now if you come around this side, we'll get these two. Um, now this one's not too bad to get to. I've got a little screwdriver here so I can basically work it by hand. But this one is a little more difficult. You can see the the nut here and it's in the eye beam so you do have to kind of work with it to get it in the hole. Now I just hold my finger on there like this and then I can push it in there. Try to screw it in place. It only takes a few turns to get it on there and it doesn't have to be super tight because most of our belt tension is going to be pulling this whole assembly that way, snug against the side of this cabinet. That's good. That looks good. Everything's tightened down. Okay, I just wanted to do a quick tip here. One of these screws was not hitting out. I couldn't get it to uh, lock into the into the nut behind there and I thought maybe the screw was just a little short from the manufacturer but as it turns out it was the nut so I just went back here pushed the nut out of the tape and put a new one in there and it worked fine you should have plenty of extra to work with. okay wh what this step includes is installing the pulley onto the stepper motor and just so you can see it easier I'm gonna take the flat printer and tilt it on its back you see here so we can get a clear shot. Um, you'll notice that of course the stepper motor shaft has one flat side. I'm going to face that to the back here and move the stepper motor this way just so I can access it a little bit easier. I have my set screw already loosened out of there. I'm going to line it up with the flat part of the shaft. And if you can come down here and look straight through do your best to align that with the hole that runs through here because this is where our belt's going to run through. And then just take your set screw and tighten it down. Okay, looks good. Let's move on. You want to locate your large timing belt and I'm going to sit the flat printer back up here. Let's go ahead and let me spin this around. Let's see the back. What we're going to do here is on this middle section, we're going to feed the belt through back around to this, uh, from this pulley on the stepper motor to this pulley over here, the free spinning pulley. The easiest way that we found to do it is, spin this, is to take your your timing belt. With the teeth facing in, just feed it through this hole. Feed a good amount in there. And come around here, see so you can grab it and just pull it through. And then we're going to feed it through this hole here into the into the stepper motor pulley but I want it to show you if you look under here we want to be on this side of the pulley with the teeth facing the pulley so I'm just going to pull it out like this and then bring it around and feed it right back through this hole in the front side of that pulley All 
right. So if you look, this is what you have on this side. And then we'll go through and we'll do the same thing on the back side here, making sure that the teeth are facing the pulley. I'm going to take this end and feed it right back through the front. Just like that. One thing to check, if you look through here, make sure that you haven't twisted it, basically. You just want it to be one continuous loop. And bring it together. You should be able to move it. Now, I just stuck the stepper motor wires in here, but if you can't move it, it might mean that one of your wires are touching and shorten out the coil. Okay, that looks good. Let's move forward. Okay, we have our belt through. We're just going to let that hang for now. We want to go back and remove all the temporary tape that we put onto the rods. Clean off any glue, excess glue that you might have had come over the edge. Because um, our bearings are actually going to be riding on these rods, so we want them nice and clean. Okay, that's good. Let's move on. Okay, we want to bring our YZ gantry assembly back in. We, uh, we're just set it. We're working here. I'm going to move this back a little bit. We still have our belt hanging loose here. We want to take the sides off of the YZ gantry assembly. Uh, and go through. Since the, since the screw only goes a little way into the nut, you only have to remove, you only have to unscrew a little bit. You can see it's barely even up there. You can wiggle it and then remove that part. And I'll flip it over and do the same thing to the other side. Now this one has the wire attached to it so you might want to pop that right out of the wire hole, wire clip there. Put these over here to the side. Okay, let's move on. Okay, for this step you're going to need your belt clamp, the other side of the belt clamp, belt clamp screw, Phillips head screwdriver, a half inch wrench, and your flat tool. Okay, we're going to start out, I'm going to flip the gantry over like this. We have access here to the belt clamp. I'm going to bring my belt together like this. You can see here, if you come in close, that I'm basically just putting these onto their corresponding teeth right up to the edge of that hole. Same thing on this one. And if it's real tight, don't forget you can move your stepper motor in to get a little bit of slack there. And just press those into place. Let that hang. Put your screw in there. And then lift your gantry up to the bottom of the I-beam. Insert the belt clamp. Take your Phillips head screw on the driver and tighten that down. Okay, that's nice and snug. It's actually over tight and you can see I have a bow there so loosen that up just a hair. A little bit better. Okay, now what we're going to do is the U-groove on the bearing is going to ride on the top of these tracks. Uh, the bottom bearing is adjustable so if it's up it's going to be in your way. Go ahead and push it down. If you've tightened it make sure you loosen it. And you can see we just have that riding on the rail. Just like you see there. If you come around to the front here, I'll show you something. We want to raise up our Z gantry, so just turning your large pulley here for the Z, lift it up to the top until it touches. We're trying to gain access to these two bolt uh, nuts underneath here that are for the, uh, the adjustable bearings on the bottom. And if you look under here, I'll, I'll move this over to the side so you can see a little bit better. You can lock those right on the groove there. But in order for that to stay tight, you have to use this tool to basically lift this side up and tighten with the wrench on the back side of it. So that's what I'm going to do now. I got that lifted into place. Make sure you wiggle it around and make sure that you have it up in, in place there. And I'm just going to use this tool to give it a slight pressure upward, like that. And then I'm going to tighten it with my wrench from the back.
I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side. Bring this back down here. Make sure I'm on there, which I am. This tool is really for one time use, but you don't need a lot of pressure, but just enough to snug it up against there. You might want to come around to the back to see. I've got the tool on there, got a little bit of pressure holding with this hand, and then I'm just going to tighten that down. Snug that in place. Okay. Now, if you wiggle your gantry, it should be on there nice and tight, which it is. That's one use of the flat tool. There is also another use for it, which we'll find out in a little while. But let's move on. Okay, we're going to tighten up the belt on the Y. Um, you can see it's really loose here. And that tightens up by moving the stepper motor out. And it'll actually tighten that belt. If you come around this side, you'll see when I move that out, it just tightens it right up. But in order to get it as tight as we need it, because there's a lot of belt here, the flat tool is going to help us with that. You'll notice it has a recessed edge here. If you come around here, I'm going to move this ribbon cable out of the way and put it up here for now. And you want to take the recess edge, also make sure you have a screwdriver, take the recess edge of the flat tool and, and slide it right in here up against the lip of that pulley. Now I've got it pushed all the way back. At that point, you can put your thumb here and your finger here, and you can watch the stepper motor move. And now you don't, it doesn't take a lot of pressure, but if you come around, you'll see it gives you leverage enough. If you look at the belt, it gives you leverage enough to tighten this belt up. So, with that in mind, I'm going to pull this back, feel my belt, make sure it's nice and tight. Yeah, that's pretty tight. I'm going to tighten down the four step on my screws. You can get to these two in the back easy. Getting to the other two, you're going to have to remove the flat tool in order to do that. And you can pull on it back a little bit if you can while you're doing this. And put our ribbon cable back down. And now, if we come around here, our belt is nice and tight. And you should be able to push it around. As long as your uh, wires aren't touching here on your ribbon cable, you should be able to push that from one end to the next. Now, a little bit later over time, you may find that the belt's worked its way in and needs to be reseated. So you can always tension that back up if you need to. Okay, let's move on. Okay, for this step we're going to install our gantry sides, Y9, A, and B. And of course they go right on there, but a little uh, tip here that I want to share with you guys. Because these are, screws are so close to the edge here, you're going to want to take a a pen or something and pull the nut out a little bit so that the screw will hit it. But once you get this in position and you get all these tabs in, in place, your best bet is to try these first. Okay, let's go ahead to the other side. I'm going to do the same thing. Basically take my pen and pull these out a little bit just so when the screw goes on it'll hit it. The one thing you want to do is move this ribbon cable out of your way so you can work here. Okay, that looks good. Now, let's take our ribbon cable. It's going to run inside of this recess back and forth, just like you see here. So, keep that in mind when you're putting the wire into the wire clamp. You want to sort of align that. Okay, so we have it in there. 
and then that's how it's going to sit. And it'll wrap around this way so you can uncoil that wire just like you see here and eventually it will go inside of a little wall that sits here. So we'll get into that a little bit later just wanted to get it set up now while we're working on it and so we'll move on all right in this step we're going to work on the pivot arms you can see here they hold our pressure rollers and also our handle slide up and down in these grooves so let's get started building the pivot arms locate parts P3 times 2, this is what they look like, and P4 times 2, this is what they look like. And what we're going to do here, you'll notice that these two holes on the front and these two holes on the back line up. We're building our pressure roller handles, so this is what we're going to wind up with. Uh, separate these a little bit. And I'm just going to flip this over and add some glue to the back. Staying away from these holes here, we're going to just sandwich this together. You also, just to help align things, you also want to get your spacers and push them down into the hole. And if you look, you can align this hole here and basically rotate on this spacer. Just make sure that's why we want to keep the glue away from that hole is so that you don't get it into the spacer. So I'm going to take this P3 and put some glue around here. The front hole is not too critical, but just give the back hole a little clearance. Once again, lining that up, push my spacer in, and then check your front hole and that looks good. I'm going to pull my spacers out now. I'm going to set those to the side to dry. Okay for this step you need your large spring, one inch quarter twenty bolt, two square nuts and the small spacer. And you're going to go ahead and using the bolt we're going to push it through the back here. We're going to slide the spacer on. We're going to slide one of the square nuts on, and I'm just doing this by hand right now. You can actually tighten it by hand. I'm trying to set it up so that the flat part is facing up. It just looks a little nicer. And then I'm going to put the spring on, put the other bolt in place. And on this stage, I want to go ahead and stand the uh, spring up and tighten that down a little bit. And get that nice and tight. But make sure that your spring is pointing straight up. Okay, that looks good. Alright, now we're going to duplicate the same process on the opposite side. This was C1, and we're just going to spin it around and do C2 the same way. Okay, we're going to do the same thing on this side. Large spring, two square nuts one inch quarter twenty and a spacer. Push the bolt through, put the spacer on, put the nut on. And that looks good. Okay, let's move forward. Okay, for this step you want to locate part P1 and what we're going to do working with the ear section, I call this the ear, the part that comes up like this, it has a recess side you also want to locate a three-quarter inch bolt, two square nuts, and one of the small springs. These are the larger square nuts, by the way. Uh, on this back ear piece, you're just going to insert the bolt. On the back here, you're going to tighten down one of the square nuts. Just tighten it down by hand. You want to put your spring on, and then put your next square nut on top of that. Now you might have to pull the spring out a little bit while you're trying to tighten that down. So it should actually come out facing this way. Like that. 
Okay, and I'm going to set that to the side. I'm going to do the same thing to part number P2. It also has the recessed sides. We also need a three-quarter inch bolt, two square nuts, and one small spring. We're working with the ear again. Basically going to insert that three-quarter inch bolt, tighten down the square nut, put the spring on, tighten down the next square nut, again pulling it out a little bit so you can get that on there. Something like that. So if you looked at both of these parts, a little bit more, but you'll be able to adjust these later when you actually see where it's going. But P1 and P2, they should look something like that at this point. Locate another three-quarter inch bolt and one large square nut. Um, this is part P1, the recess side. I'm just putting it through the bottom there on the square nut like you see here. And we're going to, this is just prepping that part for a later step. That's what that should look like. So locate another three-quarter inch bolt for P2 here and also a square nut and we're going to recess or we're going to put that into the recess there and tighten down that square nut like you see here so at this point this is where this is what your two parts would look like okay let's move forward for this step you need P2 which we've already prepped and we're on C1 side of the cabinet what we're going to do you also need one square nut sorry what we're going to do is uh, lift up P2 here, insert the spring onto the side like you see here, put the square nut on, tighten that in position. And on this one we're trying to keep the spring centered basically. And you can just hand tighten that for now, you can go back and tighten it later, but that actually helps to pull against itself. That looks good, let's move on. Okay, on this step, we are on the C2 side of the cabinet, the side that has a stepper motor. I have P1 here. We're going to do the same thing we did on the other side. You need one square nut. Install the spring. Keep it flush against that bolt the best that you can. And I usually pull up a little bit so I can turn this on a little bit easier. When the bolt comes around, the pointed side usually tries to pull on it. So that's basically what we're after at this point. You should have both sides done. Let's move forward. Okay, for this step, you're going to want to locate your pressure roller arm assembly. This P3 times 2. And you want this one that's facing the way that you see here, because we're going to work on this left side of the cabinet, the side with the free pulley. Um, you're also going to want to get an inch and a quarter bolt, two of the large washers, and one large spacer, and one square nut. We'll, we'll insert the large bolt through the washer like you see here. Insert the large spacer. Put that through your adjustable hole here. Let's flip that over. And let me bring the washer and the uh, square nut around to the side here so I can work with it. What we're going to do, actually I'm going to show you here, I have this assembly right here. I'm just going to insert it into this middle track. And then if you come around the side here, you'll see I have to basically pull this up by the spring and put it on like this. Now watch out because it might want to pop off of there. And then insert your washer and then tighten down the square nut on, onto that. Press that together. Take your screwdriver and your pliers and tighten that down. Okay, that looks good. Okay, we're going to work the same thing as we did on the other side. We're going to install this pressure roller arm. It's P3 times 2. We have our inch and a quarter bolt, a large spacer, square nut, and two large washers. So go ahead and insert the washer onto the bolt, and then your spacer. Put your spacer through the middle adjustable slot there. I'm going to move the bolt and the washer over to the side. I'm inserting this into the middle track, lifting up the adjuster and putting that on, putting a washer on, putting square nut on. And then finally, I'll take my pliers and my 
Phillips head and I'll just tighten that in place. Okay, looks good. Let's move on to the next step. Locate your pivot arm bag. Grab two large square nuts, the large bolt, two large washers, small spacer, and large spacer. What we're going to do is we're going to build up the pivot point assembly here now, uh, that will allow this arm to pivot. So what you want to do first, if you come around here, we need to bring this up onto this latch. So I'm just going to grab it and move it up and over so that it locks in. I'm going to go back around to this side and pivot move the uh, pivot arm back and push the spacer through here and into this hole just like that locate your large bolt the washer push that through and come around this side put your other washer on your spacer one of the square nuts and at this point let's push this forward holding the arm and the assembly bringing it down you want to put the spring on try to get it flush up against that square nut and then finally put your last bolt on okay let's move to the other side and we'll do the exact same thing Alright, grab your other two large square nuts, large bolt, two large washers, small spacer and large spacer from the pivot arm bag. First thing we're going to do is lift this up and lock it into position. Now you may have to hold on to this arm here because it can spin and you don't want this to fall back down. So just lift it up and get it locked over there and kind of hold on to this arm. Get your large spacer, push it through the hole and try to line up with this hole back here. You should be able to adjust it. There we go. We're locked in now. We're going to get our large bolt, large washer, push that through. You can see it sticking out the other side. The other large washer, small spacer, square nut. Now we're going to bring this arm down, Put the, attach our spring as close as we can to the square nut and tighten down the next large square nut. And that's good. Now at this point if you hold the top here you should be able to lift this up and lock it into position but to get it down you actually have to push this forward. Okay, it's working good. Let's move on to the next step. Alright, this section we're going to go ahead and hook up our flat printer electronics. Here you can see we have our driver board, our USB card, and our power supply. And here's what it's going to look like when you're done. So let's get started. Okay, on this step we're going to install our electronics. We have our main driver board, we have our USB controller, and we have the cable that connects both of these two boards together. You also want to locate your electronics spacers and small nuts. We're going to take our spacers and just put them right on the studs that we have out sticking out here of C2. And then we're going to slide our circuit board on top of that. Just try to be gentle with it, you know. And then you'll take your small nut and tighten that down a little bit. Just hand tighten it's fine. Okay, you guys see how I'm coming from the side here, just using my the side of my finger here to tighten this down. These two are a little bit close, so I just use my fingernail to push those down. That looks good. Let's take the remaining four spacers and put them on for the bottom circuit board. All right, and let's go ahead and plug in our connector cable. You can see here, plugs in just like you see here. This is a prototype cable. Yours will look nicer than this. Of 
so that this is hanging free like you see we'll go ahead and plug this into the main driver board for you guys that do not have the USB controller you can mount your board sideways if you want it to to face the parallel port out I'm just going to do the same thing go through and put these four nuts in place once you get them started you can kind of spin them from the side and you don't want to over tighten those just hand tighten them so let's go around and install these okay that looks good and that's basically the setup that you're looking for okay on this step we're going to feed our wires back down through here now you'll notice with the spacers if you come around the side here that we have room uh, back behind the circuit board to run these wires so just feed them back down through the behind the circuit board between the spacers and you can see I, over here I've got that pulled out it's going to help feed that through and then I'll go back down below this one it should pop out over here and this is what you're after and we know that this is connected to our Y stepper motor and if you look at the board you got X Y and Z so we know that this one's going to be right here in the middle as a matter of fact let's go ahead and hook this one up so it's out of the way okay on this step we're going to be hooking up our Y motor it comes off of this wire uh, block here and you want to locate your connection reference guide and a small flathead screwdriver that will fit inside of these blocks if you come down here I'll show you we have if you look on the circuit board X axis X axis Y and axis Z so Y is the is the middle one make sure that you go through and loosen these screws the best that you can and then on our reference guide here for these particular motors it says red blue green black which is the same as the sticker that's on the motor itself so we'll start out with the red and we'll work our way down just push them up through the bottom there and tighten that down make sure it's tight okay what do we have uh, red blue green and black so red and blue are one coil and green and black are the other coil of the motor Okay. We've got red, we've got blue, and we need green next. And then, of course, all the rest of the uh, axis will hook up the same way. So you won't need the card after this. You can just look to the next one to see how it hooks up. So we have green, and then finally black. Make sure they're all tight. One little last snug here. Congratulations, you just hooked up your first stepper motor to the driver board. Let's move to the next step. Okay, you want to take your Z stepper motor ribbon wire like you see here and just try to get the ends a little bit together there because what we're going to do is feed this down through behind the circuit board and eventually it will lay in the slot like this and what we're going to do right now, I'm going to feed them down through the back of the circuit boards. Both of them. Until they come out the bottom. Right down through this hole, if you come around here, you can see how it is. And that wire will lay in this notch right here eventually. 
and it will lay flush. Um, what we're going to do at this point is locate part number C6. You'll see that it has a recess here. That part, it also has a notch on this left hand side that sits right in this notch. These three big tabs line up with these three big tabs. So let's move our wire out of the way here. So just like you see we're doing here, that's how it's going to sit. I'm just going to put some temporary tape to hold that in place. Just like that. Make sure you're in that notch. Okay, that looks good. Make sure your gantry can can move. Eventually our back will be here holding that wire in place. And we have plenty of room there. So that looks good. Let's move on to the next step. So here it is. And this is our Z. So we're going to bring it all the way over here because this is our Z axis right here. And looking at this stepper motor, we're going to make the same connections. Now, another tip, just like we did with the wire blocks earlier, is even though I have these twisted together here, I'm still going to bend this. And uh, it'll just make a better connection in there. Alright. Just something like that's what you're after. And you might have to pull this wire apart a little bit to give yourself some working room there. Make sure your screws are loosened, which I've already gone through and done that. And now I'm just pushing those up, tightening down the set screw. So I got red, blue, and I'm just going to copy that side. So let's go, go through and hook these up. Okay, so we have our black, green, blue, red, black, green, blue, red. It's our Y axis, our Z axis. Our next axis will be the X, and we'll be hooking that up later. So, it looks good. Alright, this step we're going to work on the cabinet some more. You're going to see it really starting to come together. Larger pieces, moving faster, you're doing great. Keep it up. Okay, for this step, locate part C4. This is what it looks like. I've already gone through, done the taping, and put it the put the uh, square nuts in all the cross sections. We're just going to install it into these tabs across the bottom that you see here. You might. No, oh, it went right in. I thought maybe we would have to lift it up a little bit, but it went in. Then we'll take three screws and going from the inside, we'll screw that in place. Okay, on this step, you want to locate C5. This is what it looks like. We've already done the tape and put the square nuts in, the cross sections. You'll need one screw. C5 will be installed just like you see it here with this notch facing the bottom, small tab to the top. It can really only go one way and it'll sit in just like that. But I wanted to mention something first. Now that our Y gantry motor is hooked to the circuit board, when we move our gantry, we want to move it slowly because we don't want voltage to feed back too bad into the board. You can move it, you know, pretty quick, but as you move it, you can actually see the LEDs start to light up. So, just something to keep in mind, you know, just take it slow when you move it out of, out of the way. And if you come around this side, you'll see where the screw needs to be, which is right here. Um, this is not a recessed screw, so once again, be careful not to over tighten it. And that looks good. Let's move on. Okay, you want to locate part C7. You can see it here. We've already done our tape and our square nuts. They're in position. We're working on the other side of the flat printer. This is C1, opposite the stepper motor. And basically, it's going to install right here in the tabs that you see. 
lines up with these flush against C1. You need three hardware screws and we'll go in from the other side install those. You may have to you may have to push C7 in this way as you're as you're um, tightening these down. If you come around here you'll see what I mean. I'm pushing in this way a little bit just to keep it flush against the edge. Okay that looks good. Let's move on. Locate part C8. We already have our tape and square nuts. You'll need one screw. C8 will be installed with the notch side facing down into this upper part of C1. You'll need to install one screw around this side. Right here. You can move your gantry out of the way if you need to. Slowly. Okay. And we're just going to... I'm pushing on C8 this way and that looks good. Once again, a reminder that these are not recessed, so do not over tighten them. These screw heads will not go flush. Okay, for this step, locate parts C11, C12, and C13. One thing to take note, on C11 and C12, you have a recess on one side and not on the other. Um, just lay your parts out like you see here. 11, 13, 12. You'll need two hardware screws. We've already gone through and did the tape and the nuts for the T-slots. You want to take C13 and C11 and with the recess side facing out, insert C11 onto C13 like you see here. Put your screw through and tighten that down. Opposite side, we'll take C12, recess facing out. Insert the screw, tighten it down. That looks good, let's move on. Locate part C10 and your 13, 11, 12 assembly. Uh, we've already done our, our tape and nuts. And with on this particular setup, we want these tabs all facing the same direction, like you see here. And just to do a dry fit to show you, this is what it's going to look like. Just like that, we have all our tabs facing out that way. So now that we know how it's going to go, we can go ahead and put our screws in and tighten that assembly together. Okay, that looks good. Let's move on to the next step. Locate part C14. You'll notice that we've done all the taping and all of the square nuts already in position. You want to locate your spindle motor housing assembly. It's C10, C13, C11, and 12. If you come up close here on the back of C14, this is actually the back of the flat printer, you'll notice that we have uh, a few tabs here that line up. These two, tab these two tab sets in particular uh, line up with it, and also these top ones. So if you line those up, it can only go one way. It fits on just like that. Okay, let's move on. Okay, locate part C9 times 2. This is what they look like. These also attach to the back of the uh, C14, the back of the flat printer. We've already done the taping and uh, put the nuts in there. These parts we actually want to put glue on as well. But just to show you where they go, if you come over here, you'll see that we have a couple slots here. And actually one of the, the bottom tab is bigger, so it can only fit one way. And this is how they attach. And these are actually to hold the vacuum hose. So now that we know where they go on the flat parts here, I'm just going to put a little bit of glue. And put that in position. It really helps to strengthen that. Okay, that looks good. For this step, you want to locate seven of your hardware screws. We're going to be tilting this up. We're going to be screwing these two in and, and the rest of the motor spindle motor housing. So, I'm just going to pick this up and spin it around. And anywhere we see where these tabs came in, I'm just going to put the screw there. 
so we can see where they are. With one right in the middle there. We have this one and this one. Okay, so hold this from the back and just snug these. Once again, the heads are not recessed for these screws, so do your best to not over tighten them. Okay, let's take a look at it. Might want to go through and at this point wipe off any excess glue or remove any tape that you don't want showing up because this is the finished side here. And take C14 assembly and set it to the side. Okay, we brought the flat printer assembly back in. What we're going to do is we're actually going to lay this down on its face and move this wire out of our way. We're going to install our C14 assembly, which is the back of the flat printer, right to the back. Now, of course, we're upside down, so we need to rotate this around like you see it here. Line up, the easiest way is to line up the feet here first and work your way through. You can move tabs around if you need to. Once you get a start, I usually try to do both ends and then work my way to the center. Works out pretty well. If you get a stubborn tab, like I'll show you here, if you get a stubborn tab that will not go in like this one here, if you come around this way, that one's just a little bit off to the side, you can pry it over if you need to and then it'll go in. And then once you start getting the alignment right, it works a little bit better. And all I'm doing is putting a screwdriver in there and pushing the way that it needs to go. Now, of course, I can reach these, so if I need to, I can move them. This one I'll move with a screwdriver. And that's it. We're in. That looks good. Let's move on to the next step. Okay, for this step, you want to locate several of your hardware screws. We're going to go through and everywhere there's a tab intersecting that needs a screw, we're going to go ahead and put that in there. So I'm just going to go through and place them in the holes by hand first. And then I'll go back and screw them in. So let's do that now. Okay, we'll go ahead and screw all these in. Okay, that looks good. Let's move on. Now that we have the back of the flat printer uh, cabinet screwed in place, I'm just going to reach under here and flip this up and over. I, I grabbed the bottom of the eye beam to do that into position. So that looks good. Let's move on to the next step. All right, in this step, we're going to go ahead and cover our drive rollers that you see here. These will be the X that move the material back and forth. And we're going to install our pressure rollers. Now, this is going to be optional. You can cover these or choose not to. We include enough of the grip material. Okay, on this step, we're going to install our pressure rollers into the holes here on the sides of the lever system. And you're going to need four of your 5 8 sleeve bearings and six of your 5 8 lock collars. You're also going to need a 5 32nd hex head and your two pressure rollers and your one handle. These are all 5 8 rods as well. The handle's a little bit shorter. Okay, for the pressure rollers, we've included two 36 inch pieces of the adhesive grip tape. And you're welcome to cover these. It's optional. Um, we usually wrap it long ways and, and wrap it one time on there. But it's up to you guys. We're not going to cover ours. We're just going to move on and continue with assembly of the pressure rollers. Okay, on this step, you want to take your sleeve bearing and press it right into this piece in the back here. It sandwiches between these two layers. You can move this piece in the back to get it to where you want it so that it lines up. You want to take one of your lock collars, slide it on the end of the rod, and another lock collar, 
slide it on the opposite end. So we have our pressure roller, we have a lock collar, we have two lock collars on it basically. We're going to take our, our uh, flange sleeve bearing and slide that over. So this is what you should have at that point. Now, without your flange bearing being in this side, you're just going to slide this through the hole so that you can come into this side. Now we can push the sleeve bearing back, center everything. And if you come around to the back here, you can see how, how much I have sticking out here. And then you come around to this side and look. You want to split the difference. Get those even. You take your two lock collars, slide them up against the flange bushings. You see here. Take your hex driver, tighten it down. Okay. Now on this side, you don't want these to rub super tight. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm going to tilt this back a little bit, make sure the cabinet is, is nice and aligned. You don't need this to rub tight, and we can always adjust its position later. Um, you want these to roll freely against the flange bushings here, so I'm leaving a small gap between the two. So what you're after is you want that to be able to roll nice and free. Okay, let's put the other one together. We're going to do the same thing. We already have our flange bushing on this side. So we're going to install our lock collar on one side, lock collar on the other side, like you see here. Flange bushing. Push this through. Put the rod in this hole here. Put your flange bushing in here. Like I said, you might have to move this piece to align that. Try to split the difference between the two. Slide your lock collars down against the flange bushings. Make sure you're even on the ends. I can already see I have to go back and redo that one because I, I'm not exactly even. Do that a little bit. Tighten this down. while holding it against the flange bushing. Same thing here, but you don't press it right against it. You want to leave a little bit of a space there. Kind of hard to get to with the, with the tool. So you want that to roll freely. Okay, let's move on. You want to grab the remaining of the two lock collars that you have. You want to put one on one end of the shorter of the 5 8 rods. The shortest of the 5 8 rods. One on the other end and slide your handle on through here to tilt this up at an angle. Slide this end on. Try to get them evenly spaced. One thing about this handle that I want to mention is you don't want to press it too hard against the sides, but you can press out against the sides to kind of keep it more centered. You want to come over here with your Allen key, tighten down the lock collars. Okay, that looks good. Okay, so holding on to the I-beam, because we don't have the rest of the weight of the machine on here right now, so if we try to lift this up, it's going to want to tilt back. So just grab the bar, the handle in the center, and hold the I-beam down here, and lift up until it locks into place, like you see here. Now, when I went to push down on this, it kind of locked up on me. I had to loosen this nut a little bit. It was sandwiched in too tight. But in order to get the handle down, it takes a little bit of breaking in over top of this uh, candy cane shape here on each side. And after you work it for a while, it gets easier, but it takes your hands out here on the edges with a quick downward motion to get over that hump. Now, over time, it'll get better. If you, if you see like this, it angles, that's fine. 
But one thing I want to mention, if it angles like that, don't try to knock this side down. It won't work. You have to lift this back up. Vice versa this way. If it angles like that, don't try to knock this one down. Just bring this one back up. Bring them both down and up at the same time. And down is a quick jerk type motion and up is a... Is you can pull up slowly and once we have the weight of the other stepper motor and the drive rollers it'll be a lot easier to work with. So that looks good and we'll leave them in the up position right now and we're going to move on. You may just want to work this handle in a little bit so it's easier to use in the future. So I'm just going to do some repetitive up and down movements to show you how it works. Uh, quick jerk motion down and pull up in the center. Later we'll be able to pull up from the sides when we have the weight down here. Over time it'll round this portion right here if you look closely. It'll round that off a little bit and just make it a lot easier. Okay, I'm going to leave this in the up position. On this step we are going to prep the uh, drive rollers. You'll find your two adhesive back grip tape. Um, there's two ways you can go about this. There's enough here in a continuous roll to do a spiral wrap at an angle, which you know some of the guys like to do that. Uh, but we're just going to go ahead and show you how to do the actual 27 inch wide strips. It takes three strips at 27 inches wide to do the entire drive roller. Um, if you don't butt them real close together, you should get a nice even coat all the way around. So take a pair of scissors and your uh, tape measure and one of the rolls. I'm just going to lay it out here and set it up for 27 inches. More or less. So we have 27 right here. I'm going to cut that now. Take my tape measure away. And I'll just cut the rest of them the same length. Flip this over so I can see it a little bit better where I need to do it. on the bottom so I can see where I'm at. Okay. okay. So we'll go through and show you with these three strips of 27 inches wide um, how you would cover this. Okay, so I'm just going to go through here and remove the, the paper backing so we can get to the adhesive. If you'll notice on the, on the drive roller there actually are little uh, horizontal lines that you can use for alignment. Uh, I noticed this when I did the first one. Now you'll notice that there's a taper on each end of this. We want to center this tape between the between the uh, tapers there. So try to get somewhere on the center there. That looks pretty good. As long as you're close. Remember the main objective is to grip the material. So I'm just going to roll this all out. Okay, let's do the next one. Now on this we're just going to follow the edges right against the edge of that one. 
I do it usually in the center as well. And don't uh, try to butt it too close because we don't want to run short at the end too much. And you can see, I can see that there's silver through there and that's fine actually. It's not going to hurt anything because the gap will be able to uh, span it. You don't want to overlap it. You're better off leaving a little bit of a space there. And you can pull it back up. I'm just going through, if you get an, a close-up shot of this, you'll see I'm leaving a little bit of a gap here. Just so I'm not overlapping these two pieces of tape. Go through. Pull that out. And we'll do the next one. Once again, I'm, I'll get this aligned here. Uh, get it started there. On this one, I'm just going to tack it a little bit on this side. Once again, leaving a small space. And then we'll roll it around to see where it's going to hit out. It looks pretty good. Let's roll the whole thing. Okay, that looks great. You can see that that's the line we're left with. That, that's fine. These are our lines that we did in the beginning. So that came out really good. Now we're going to repeat the same process with the second roller. Okay, that looks good. We have our two drive rollers ready to go. Let's move on to the next step. In this step we're going to go ahead and complete our x-axis. We're going to install our drive rollers and all of the supports necessary. Let's get started. On this step we're going to attach the small pulley to the X stepper. You'll notice the stepper has a flat shaft on, on part of the uh, shaft here. It's flattened for our set screw to sit against and of course we have our set screw built right into the pulley hub we're just going to make sure you're make sure you use a 1 16th allen make sure that you loosen that set screw so it's nowhere in the shaft bring this down over top of the stepper motor and we want to leave if you look real close here I'll bring us down you know leave about an eighth of an inch where that shaft ends where the flattened part of that shaft stops and then I'll show you, we want to tighten this down, and I'll show you what it looks like in the top there. So you look down in there, there's about a quarter inch. Yeah. Okay, so that's good. We have that on there. Let's move to the next step. Okay, for this step, let's locate part number X2. This is what it looks like. It has the stepper motor mounting holes. You notice we've gone through and did the taping and the square nuts. You see the part facing this way. You see this hole here. That's the hole for these wires. And the first thing I want you to do is make sure that you take the wires out of their loop that we have in here so that we can get as much wire as we can out of this, except for the yellow and, and uh, white. We're not using those, so we don't need them. Okay, so I have my stepper motor sitting like this. I'm going to turn it so that the wires are facing that hole. And I'm just going to feed these wires through this hole. I'm going to set the stepper motor right on its mount. Okay, just let that sit there like that for right now. Actually, I'll move it down out of the way a little bit. Over here, we have our stepper motor mounting screws. These are a little bit different in that we have to build tensioners for the belt to wrap around. 
these two normal screw, normal size stepper motor uh, screws will be used at the bottom and these two tensioners that we build will be used on the top two screws up here. So just for now I'm going to take the two shorter of the bolts and put them in the bottom part of the stepper motor so it kind of holds this piece of wood straight. And the screws are tight so just take your drill and push them down in there and that's good. Now we want to take, I'll show you how to build one of these and then we'll repeat the process over here. Basically you take your large spacer and your small spacer, insert the small spacer inside, take your your bolt, long bolt, the big washer, slide that through, and then slide the washer on the end. And that this is what we're after. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in over here. I'm just pushing them in right now. The same thing with this one. Large bolt, washer, set that to the side, take your large spacer, small spacer, insert it, slide it through the center, your other washer, and push that through the hole. And if you have to tighten it down with the with the uh, screwdriver, go ahead. And then we're, all we're going to do at this point, I'll flip this over, we're going to add our mounting hardware, the nuts here, onto the back. So go through and do that with your drill or your screwdriver. I hold this in here with my finger as I tighten it down. And I'm actually not tightening that down all the way because we want this to move once again so we can adjust the belt tension. So just go through and put these on. Okay, that looks good. This is what, what you're after. Um, it's just loose and, and that looks good. Let's move on to the next step. I have X2 here with the stepper motor that we just did. Stepper motor mount. I'm going to set that to the side right now. It's ready to go. Uh, locate part X1, X3, and X4. This is what they look like. You can see that we've gone through, we've already done the taping and the square nuts. And you're also going to need to get some of the hardware screws and your drill. On this step, we're going to attach these components to the back of the flat printer. So, starting with X4, move these out of the way. This is what X4 looks like. Does not have the hole, uh, just has a small hole here. Um, with your slots facing here where your drive rollers will sit, you'll notice the tabs in the back here line up with the tabs here. So just put them in their place here. Push it through. Take one screw and screw that into the back. Just keeping it flush. You want to locate X3 with this big notch facing the front and the tabs to the back here. You'll notice this one floats off of the ground a little bit. I'm going to put that back there. Put one of your hardware screws in. Next is X2 with our stepper motor mount stepper motor facing the front. You line up to the next set of tabs here in the back. Put that in, take and put one of your screws in. And 
last is X1 with the large hole here and your drive roller slots here. We're going to put that into the last set of tabs, but this hole here we actually want to feed the stepper motor wires through. So as you get it in there, go ahead and push those through. And then line up your tabs in the back. Just like you see here. Take one screw, screw that in position. Take your stepper motor wires, if you come over here, you'll see, I'll switch sides with you. These wires have to be fed through this hole right here. So an easy way to do that is to tie them all together for that step, just twist them. Or tape them. If you come around the front here, you'll see where they come out. Try to get them, you know, away from these other wires. Actually, I'm going to try to push them underneath. Make sure you have them all through. Should be four of them: red, blue, green, and black. Just let them sit there for now. Okay, everything looks good there. Let's move on to the next step. Okay, on this step, we're going to go ahead and install our rollers. And first thing we want to do: our pulleys are on the right end. They're going to line up with the stepper motor on this side. Just going to take your closed loop belt, slide it on there. Doesn't matter if it's on the pulley or not. And just set your shaft on the back slot first. And you might have to rotate the shaft a little bit. And then you can slide your, your belt across here. Go ahead and take the second one. Do the same thing. Uh, just make sure you grab the belt and put that on. And try to pull the belt down here in line with the stepper motor pulley. And you actually should be able to put it on there. And if you come around here, you can see I just wrapped it around there. It's loose. If you come around the back side there, you should be able to see it. The belt's just sitting on there. Okay, let's move on. Okay, for this step, we're going to need X5 times 2. This is what they look like. And you can see how it has this wedge at the bottom. This is going to be our top. And we're just going to slide these over top of these hex axles. Press them on. Just like that. We're going to do the same thing with this side. This side, the flap side here facing up. Just going to slide those on. Just like that. Okay, you're going to want to locate the four lock collars and also a 332nd hex driver. Uh, what we're going to end up doing eventually is placing these lock collars on these hex shafts with the set screw facing in a position so you can reach it and also on one of the flat surfaces of the hex shaft. Uh, one of the things, and this is an important step that you want to do, is you want to push your roller. i got my two fingers here holding against this. Uh, a brace here and I'm pushing on the roller to make sure it's as far as it can go that way. Uh, at the same time what we're trying to eliminate is any movement side to side. Now if I hold on to the end of this shaft for instance and uh, emulate side to side movement, if I see side to side movement there, if you look right in here, mm -hmm. uh, you're going to want to push that shaft over as far as you can get it. It may mean realigning this, but we're trying to eliminate. Now, if, if I hold the end on here, there's no side-to-side -side movement. Uh, same thing on this back one. If we get any side-to-side, -side, I get a little bit of movement here. If you look down in here, mm -hmm. you can see what I'm going to do is pull it all the way over to the right, and then I'm going to go over here on this shaft end and just press it towards that wall. So I'm getting the shaft as far as I can that way. And then you can see if I hold it, I can't move it to the side anymore, back and forth. So that's something that we have to do to eliminate any side-to-side -side movement, and it's an important step. 
before we go any further. Make sure that you get both of these drive rollers as far to the left as you can get them and you eliminate any side to side movement. Okay, now once you do that, you can insert the lock collars onto the drive rollers axles and tighten them down. I put one set screw facing out this way because I can reach back here and tighten it down. And I got one facing this way. Now you may find that you need to push this lock collar as you tighten it down to get a good tight fit. And you can double check. I got a little bit I can hear. Actually it's not bad. I don't see any movement. I'm pretty good there. So I'm going to go ahead and crank that down. I'm not getting any real movement. Okay, let's focus our attention to this side of the machine. And I'm just going to place the lock collars on here and face the set screws in the direction that I can find easiest to tighten them. And I'm going to go through and I'm just going to tighten these down, but I'm not going to tighten them real tight because we're going to have to go back and adjust these later. I'm just barely snugging them. Just something to hold them on for right now. Okay, let's move on. Okay, at this point you want to locate your four nuts and bolts. The nuts have the serrated edge, as you see here. And what you're going to do is just push them through the sides here. And these will go into our roller height adjusters, drive roller height adjusters. And you want to go ahead and put the nut on the back. You can just hand tighten it for now. Because we still want this to be able to move up and down. We'll set that height later. Do the same thing to the other side here. Just push the bolt through. Put the nut on the back side. Okay, that looks good. Let's move on. Okay, for this step you want to ensure that your belt is on your pulleys, drive roller pulleys here, and that if you look around the back here, it is looped around the inside face of your tensioners and around the underside of the pulley. And of course it's loose right now, uh, but we will be tightening this in a, in a little while. So just get that into position and let's move on. Okay, so the drive rollers themselves are adjustable in height. We're able to lift these up and down. You can see here by moving these pieces on the side. We have found through experimentation that using uh, the height of two washers it gives you the best results. So what we're doing is we're taking out of the eight washers, we're taping, taping them in pairs of two, and this will give us our height that we're looking for. And you guys can experiment with this and you might come up with uh, different heights that you, that you like better for different materials. It's, it's up to you. But this is what you're after. You want four sets. I'm sorry. This is what you're after. Yeah, you want four pairs of two washers taped together. Okay, now what you're going to do is set the washer right here over top of the channel where the drive roller axle goes in and just kind of balance them on there for now and then very carefully we will bring down the pressure rollers on top of those washers so that they're in position and at this point we're going to want to locate some clamps and we're going to clamp these rollers right to the pressure roller. I've got a set of quick clamps here and I'm just going to go through and just bring those up. I'm not over tightening it right now because I want to get all of them even. Um, 
you might find a different method for doing this, but I had the clamps ready. Another thing to be sure of is make sure that your washers are not hitting your pulleys or anything else that's obstructing it from actually clamping tight to the bar. I've got two more on this side. Make sure it's not touching. That one was touching, so I'm going to push it out of the way a little bit. Okay, and now I'm going to crank down a little bit on them, just to make sure they're even. And you can look through here and just make sure that they're pressed up against there tight on each end. And that looks good. My washers aren't touching. You can see over here, everything looks good there. And at this point, we can take our Phillips head screwdriver and a 7 16 wrench. And I usually use a screwdriver to hold the end. I get it kind of tight. And we're going to tighten down these adjusting blocks. Kind of dig that serrated nut into the MDF a little bit so that it does not move. And we'll go through and do all four of these. kind of a pain to get into some of these but really the screwdriver is just holding the uh, screw just for a minute until that gets tightened down then you should be good to tighten it the rest of the way okay that looks good I'm going to go ahead and release the clamps Let's move on to the next step. Okay, at this point we want to get our washers out, so we want to lift our pressure rollers uh, off of the drive rollers. So, you know, placing your hand somewhere where you can hold the machine down. I'm using the I-beam. I'm just going to lift this up, lock it in position, and move these out of the way. I usually save these, so if I ever need to readjust, I'll have them handy. Okay, at this point we want to take these lock collars off. We've already got our, our drive roller in position and I've already loosened these set, or these set screws so I'm going to just take this off and set these to the side. I'm going to move this forward a little bit and what I want to do is actually tilt the whole machine back. Now be careful not to grab any of this stuff as you do it. The only solid area you can work with is the top uh, I-beam. So, if you look under here, that's what we want to gain access to. Okay, so we have it sitting back on the motor mount in the back there, and we can easily access our stepper. You want to locate the faceplate for the flat printer. Uh, this is what it look like. looks like. It's part C15. You can see here I already have all the bolts in position, or nuts in position there. And we're going to go ahead and just line up all these tabs and put it on you may have to kind of push them around there and work our way down you're also going to want to locate the bolts for these and we'll go ahead and screw all these face bolts in including these two side bolts here so let's go ahead and do that now
Okay, on this step we are going to tighten down our stepper motor screws, which uh, will tighten our belt. Of course, as we pull down, the belt gets tighter. Now, you don't want to over-tighten this belt. Um, these pulleys are epoxied in position, so you don't want to rip the epoxy off of them. Just, just so it's uh, kind of taut at the top there, you can feel it. It can move down about an eighth of an inch, I think. And if you come around this side, I'm just, what I'm going to do is actually, actually, if you come back here, what I'm going to do is just holding this down a little bit with my hand on the top here, I'm going to put my thumb against these screws and hold them in place while I take the screwdriver from the side there and tighten it in position. So let's do that now. Once you get it started, it should go pretty good. If you come around this side, you might get a better idea of how I'm holding the, uh, the position of the... I got my finger on the nut here. If you come right around here, you should be able to see. Just holding that in position while I tighten the screw down. If you have to, you can put a nut driver on there or a wrench. Okay, that looks good. Belt is pretty tight. A little too tight probably, but I could adjust that later. I'm going to go ahead and tilt the flat printer back onto its uh, onto its feet, bring it up and down, and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, for this step, you want to locate your remaining two lock collars. Just going to put them on the end, facing where we can reach them. So help lock it in position. Just tighten those down. Oh, doesn't take much. Try to push them up against the the MDF there. That looks good. Now you shouldn't have any play side to side, which we don't. And belt's relatively tight. I think my belt is a little too tight to be honest. But I can go back and adjust that later. Um, everything should be aligned when you look down through here with the pulleys, and that looks good. Put the pressure roller down so I can grab the I beam and move it back. It's looking good. Let's move on to the next step. All right, this step we're going to work on the cabinet some more. You're going to see it really starting to come together. Larger pieces moving faster. You're doing great. Keep it up. For this step, let's locate part number C16. This is the cutting surface. This is what it looks like. You'll notice it has recessed screw heads for the top. I'm going to set this down for a second because if your bar, if your pressure bar is down, you need to lift that up out of the way. C16 is a part that we might be taking in and out a lot, so went ahead and uh, made it without any cross tabs. It's a real tight fit here, but once you get it lined up perfect, you can get it to slide back here. Okay, just check the back. There's tabs back there that have to line up before it will go down. And on this particular part, I'm starting over here on the left hand side and kind of just pressing it into place, working my way down. Make sure, let me move the gantry out of the way here. Make sure you get the middle here. Keep working your way down. You might have to adjust this back and forth as you go. There, snapped right in. Now, if you run into a situation where the inside parts are off a little bit, remember just get your flathead screwdriver and you can move it back into position to get it where you want it to go. So, this, this went on really well. Let's go ahead and get some of the hardware screws and we'll screw this together.
On these back ones here, you might need to use your short screwdriver to get underneath of the I-beam to tighten this whole row of the back ones. But the front ones you should be able to get. Okay, on these you want to make sure that the head of the screw is flush with the, uh, with the cutting surface so that when your material moves back and forth you don't have to worry about it grabbing on a screw. Okay, for this step we want to go ahead and install a screw here and one on this side in this hole here. So I'm going to go ahead and put the screws in the holes. Tighten them down. You might have to angle them a little bit like I just did, or even push in with your thumb. Once again, they're not recessed, so don't over tighten them. That looks good. Let's move on. We're also going to need four screws on the back. Okay, that looks good. Let's move on to the next step. Okay, locate part C18. This is what it looks like. We're going to flip this over. We have the recess on this side. Make sure they're facing down. Once again, tape all the cross sections. Add the square knots. We have the vent here on the side of C18. We also have the stepper motor on this side and that's what the vents for allow some of the heat out. And one of the things I wanted to show you, this is roughly how it's going to sit for the top, but you'll notice that we have to get it underneath of the gantry system here. So you want to go ahead and feed that under there first and then you can work your tabs in starting from up here or wherever is easiest for you. Just work your way all the way down the part until you get those all in. Go ahead and put the screws in there. Okay, it looks good. Let's move on to the next step. On this step, locate part C20. This is the side opposite the stepper motor to the left of the flat printer if you're facing it from the front. You'll notice that it has recessed sides recess screw heads on one side. I want to flip it over so it's facing the opposite side. You also need eight of the T-nuts and on all eight of these holes we're going to push a T-nut in here and twist it to the left as we push in. Get those see it. And this is going to help us out with future attachments and also um, the ability to have a place to put your attachments when they're not in use. When you're switching between attachments. So just get those seated as flush as you can get them. And that'll give us threads so we can attach things to the side of the flat printer 3. Okay, I have C20. We're going to attach that to the side. I have some of the uh, hardware screws. But before we do that, we need to locate part C19. It looks like this. This is actually a door that's going to sit on here. You'll notice that it has tabs here. Those tabs slide right into the into the side piece here. So it'll sit just like that. Starting from the bottom here, now we have our recess holes facing out of C20. Uh, one of the things, just a quick tip, move your flat printer out so it hangs over the edge. It's a lot easier to get this on if you do that. So I'm just going to start here at this bottom corner and work my way around. This one you have to kind of wiggle to get into place. OK, 
Okay, that looks good. Let's go ahead and put the screws in. Okay, that looks good. Let's uh, go over here, check the door, make sure it works. If it does, it takes a little bit to get these to wear in a little bit. And once they do, it'll be able to kind of line up better and, and seat good. But this gives you the inside access to anything you need in there for the springs or, or whatever. Of course, you can always take the side off. Okay, so let's move on. On this step, you get to build the flat door. You'll be working on the hinge system, which allows this door to open and close in this unique way. Let's get started. On this step, you want to locate PD1, PD2. You'll notice that they have recesses for the nuts to fit into. So just take the nut, place it in there, and we're going to run tape across there, tape these into position. Once again, later you can remove the tape. Okay, at this point you want to locate part PD3. This is what it looks like. I want you to notice it has recessed screw heads, also recessed areas here. Um, we actually want to flip this over and we want to take PD1 lining up the screw holes that we have here around this outer edge with the bolts here. What's going to happen is PD1 and PD2 are going to sit are going to sit just like this. So keeping that in mind I'm going to set PD2 to the side right now and just going to lift this up. I'm actually going to put the put one of the screws through so I can see where to line this up at and it can only really go one way. Just goes right against it like that. Tighten that down. The screw, the screw will come through. Make sure you keep your thumb on the back. And don't tighten it all the way because you're going to want to move it around a little bit like you see here. So we can align the rest of these. So we're gonna, once you get two, you're good. And what you're going to notice is, well, now I can go back and tighten that down. What you're going to notice is what we're doing is creating a lip, and that lip is going to be for a door that eventually sits on the outside of this. So it does have an overhang. So just go through, after, like I said, after you have two, you're aligned, and you should be able to just go right through them. That's what you're after. At this point, you can go through and remove your tape. Okay, that looks good. Okay, now on PD2, you'll notice we have rounded edges here. They face to the inside of the doorway. You'll also notice we have two nuts here that lines up with these two screw holes and one down here that lines up with this one. So what I'm going to do to make it a little bit easier is I'm just going to push two of these through all the way and then let them stick out the back here and line them with these two holes. That'll help me get a good start. On this step you want to locate PD4 times 2. This is what they look like. Uh, we've gone through, we've taped the backs and added the square nuts. Try to stay away from the hole when you're 
putting your tape on so you'll be able to get that out later. Uh, you also want four of your hardware screws. And I'm going to flip this back over, PD3 here, the side, so that the recesses are facing down. And if you look here, you'll notice we have one long tab, one small tab. That lines up with these right here. Not the ones on the very bottom, but the next set up. Up here at the top, directly in line with it, once again, we have the small tab and the large tab. And that lines up right here. We're building a hinge system at this point. Go ahead and push the screws through the holes or the, next to the tabs and tighten those down. That's what you're after. That looks good. Let's move on. Okay, on this step you want to locate parts PD5 times 2. This is what they both look like. And also part PD8. Um, you want to go ahead and put your tape on these cross sections and add the square nuts as usual and what you want to do at this point is you'll notice that PD5 has recessed screw heads on one side on both parts and they're mirror images you also need two hardware screws looking at PD8 we have a short side and a long side short leg long leg and looking at PD5 you'll notice we have the shark fin looking piece on this end on this short end, we want the shark fin to face of PD5. And you want to make sure that you keep the recess up. So you notice we have the short leg here and the shark fin. The long leg extends back to this little fin. Just like you see there. So put that together with a screw. And the same thing on the bottom, making sure that your recess is facing out so that the parts are basically mirrored. We have our short leg with the shark, big shark fin, long leg, small shark fin. Okay, that looks good. Let's go ahead and move on. Okay, for this step you're going to need PD6, PD7 times 2. These two are identical. Um, you want to go ahead and put your tape and also your square nuts in, in position. You'll notice on PD6 we have a recess here for our fan guard. And we also have the recess holes for the screw heads. Let's flip this over so the recesses are facing down. We're going to line up our tabbing here with the tabbing here. Same here and here. I'm going to flip it back over. Insert the screws. Four all together. And we'll tighten that into position. Check it, make sure it's not bowed. Looks good. Okay, let's move to the next step. We're going to build the part of the hinge system for the door. We'll be attaching the assembly here that houses the door hinge onto the actual side of the door um, going through our PD4s here. So what you're going to need are a couple of the flat spacers. You're also going to need inch and a quarter, quarter 20 screw, large, wash, large spacer, small spacer, small washer, and a square nut. To get an idea how this is going to sit on here, you want to take your shark fins and just set them on there just like you see here. And that will give you an idea of how it goes together. You'll see how everything lines up here on the back. As a matter of fact, I'm going to flip this over. And we'll actually work on this bottom portion. So I'm going to take my two flat spacers and put them together like this. I'm going to slide them right here. Try to line them up with that hole the best that you can. Take your large plastic spacer. Push it through. and move these spacers around until you can get it to go all the way in. Once you get that in, take your small spacer. I pushed, I pushed the large spacer all the way to the back here. Take your large spacer and push it in as well. You want to take your large bolt, push it through the top, coming down this way. 
your washer, and then your square nut. Go ahead and get your Phillips head screwdriver, tighten that in position. Okay, that looks good. Now we're going to do the same thing on this side. I'm just going to flip it over. What we're going to do is take our two flat spacers, put them into the sandwich them in here like you see here. You might have to come down and look from the top. Your large plastic spacer. Try to line that up. Get it through both of these and you'll see that it's flush in there. Take your plastic spacer, the small plastic spacer, push that into the top. Take your bolt, make sure you hold your finger on this end. Push that all the way through. Take your washer and your square nut. Screwdriver and pliers. Tighten that in position. Okay, so that is the back part of our hinge. And that's the way that's going to work. Okay, let's move on to the next step. At this point, you want to locate your PD6 assembly. We're going to attach PD6 to our hinge system on the side of the cabinet here, PD3. You are also going to want to locate these flush mount flathead screws that have, as you can see, they have a locking star on the bottom. And you need uh, four of your small spacers, two of the small uh, washers, and two of the square nuts. So let's get started. First thing you should do is tilt this up. And you'll notice that PD6 has an angled front here that lines up with this angle front. And eventually this door will sit flush into here. So for now I'm just going to set it down here. Both of these arms should go to the outside of PD7 here, these two PD7s. So just go ahead and set yours up just like you see it here. Okay, you want to take one of your small spacers, push that into one of the arms, and take another small spacer and push it, if you come around the back here, push it into the back here. Just like that. We're going to align these two and take one of our flush mount screws and try to line these up. There we go. Just like this. If you look around that side you'll see how much is sticking out there. Take a small washer, put that on and right now you don't have much of a thread to catch but you will once this head recesses down in there. But for now I'm just going to leave that loose. We're going to do the same thing on this side. I'm taking my small spacer, pushing that in. On the back side here, small spacer. I'm going to push the bolt through and line it up. Oops, spacer came out. It's alright. Put your washer on. And then take your thumb and turn that in a little bit and that looks good. I'm going to take this whole assembly and what we have to do is we have to recess these uh, screw heads so you want to take your pliers and however you can get to them the best just turn them one turn at a time until they start recessing into the hole here and tighten up and you'll actually see that it it will go in there. If you have a flathead screwdriver you can hold the other side. And just try to get it snug. That looks good. Do the same thing to this side. So that's our door assembly. And you'll see over time when you work that how you can open and close it. So it kind of acts like a parallel hinge and you also have the ability to tilt this back against the cabinet as well. But you can see these handles here, they're actually recesses for you to grab a hold of.
to be able to lean that out of the way while you're working on your circuitry. Okay, so that looks good. Let's move on to the next step. Okay, on this step, you're going to want to locate your four fan bolts, your fan, and also your fan guard, and of course our door assembly here. What we're going to do here is our fan guard is going to sit inside of this recessed area like you see here. And our fan is going to hook to the back. And I want you to pay attention to where the wires are facing. We, since all of our power supply and everything is going to be on this side, if we were looking at the cabinet this way, oops, if we're looking at the cabinet this way, we want our wires to face this way, just like you see it here. Okay, so let's come around the front here. I'm holding the fan in place and aligning the holes. And the holes are tight for these screws, but the plastic is soft enough to actually make its own thread. So just by hand, get a little, get the first start in there. You can feel it kind of start. And then with your drill on low, take your time and just kind of go through the plastic with some pressure. Okay. Then you'll feel the fan sandwich up against the wood. Okay. That looks good. So now our fan is installed. You can see it here. And we still have the ability to open and close and our fan will still be connected to our power supply over here. Let's move on to the next step. Okay, on this step we are going to go ahead and install our X stepper motor wires. We just had them sitting here. So copying the rest of the color code from these wires from the Y and Z, we're going to do the same thing on the X, but the first I'm going to bend these wires over a little bit. Like I said, some of you guys might want to tint these wires as well. But I like to fold it like this, so that it, when, I, when that screw comes down, it'll definitely hold it. Okay, so we're starting with red for the first hole. You notice it's a lot easier if you move the flat printer out over the ledge. And uh, for our next step, we'll have to have it out there anyway. Tighten that down. Okay, then we're going to blue. Make sure you unscrew your screws if they're tight like this one was. We got our green next. The screw might look loose, but it's still probably still tight if you can't uh, if you can't get the wire to go in the hole. Like this screw looks loose, but it's actually not open. Open that up a little bit. Goes right in. And this is our last wire of the black. So go through. Tighten down all your connections. Make sure they're snug. And let's just check our our cable connection here. Everything is tight there. Wires look okay. We know those are good. Okay, so that looks good. Let's move on to the next step. Okay, you want to locate part C21. This is what it looks like. The hole lines up with the hole here. Just keep that there. You see how it falls down until it gets in this next hole, so you're going to have to work it. Okay, at this point you want to locate the side for the flat printer. We're going to install it onto the side here, but I wanted to let you know that 
Because of the pressure of the stepper motor pulling with the tension of the belt, these tabs are going to give you some problems. So I took my sanding block and just angled them a little bit here. Also, when we go to line this up, we're going to have to make sure that this tab lines up with this hole. I'm going to start down at this bottom corner and work my way around. And you can see here I'm not lining up, so I'm just going to get that where I can get it to line up. Now, right here, even though I've sanded this, it's still tight, but if I push hard, I can get it to go on there. Okay, that looks good. Let's go ahead and get some screws, and we'll screw that side in. Okay, that looks good. I'll give the door a test. Grab it from the side there. That's how you open it up. And that's good. You can get in here, access whatever you need to access in here, and then close it right back up. Okay, that looks good. Let's move on. Alright guys, well, sad to say, this is the last and final step of the Flat Printer 3 build log. On this step, we'll be installing the hardware on the spindle attachment. We'll be installing the tool and the vacuum hose. In other words, when you're done this step, you will be complete your flat printer 3. You've done a great job. Now let's get started. Okay on this step you're going to want to locate your spindle attachment. Go ahead and remove the tape that we had on there earlier holding the parts together while the glue was curing. And you also want to locate the knobs with the threaded shafts, two of them, and the long screws for those knobs. Now, if you're right-handed, you're going to want your knobs on the right-hand side, left-handed on the left-hand side. I'm right-handed, so I'm inserting the bolts this way. Now, there might be some glue in there, so you might even have to screw some of these through. Uh, they went pretty good. You can see there's a little bit sticking out there. The purpose of these knobs are actually to tighten the spindle once we get it where we want it. You hold a Phillips head screwdriver on this end and then tighten the knob down to get it in position. So right now I'm just hand tightening it because I'm actually going to leave it quite loose because I want to be able to push the spindle down through that hole with, without any tensions and I already know it's a very tight fit. You also want to locate your four knobs that already have the studs attached to them. You can see the keyway here the, this is the this is the whole purpose of the attachment system that we can remove these and put different attachments on here. Shaft. This is the flex shaft attachment. We'll go ahead and insert the knobs into the four holes. These you can go ahead and tighten. They don't need to be over tight. That keyway is going to lock that whole system in. Okay, that looks good. Let's move on to the next step. Okay, this is our flex shaft tool. Um, one of the things we have to do with this tool is remove this handle. We do not use it, so I'm just going to take my screwdriver and get it out of the way. Okay, that looks good. Next thing we have to do is remove this plastic on the tool housing. And watch out, there's a little grease back in here. So, usually you can peel this off. Make sure that you go through and read the manual. Make sure you understand all the safety precautions. Inside that, you'll also find a small bag that contains extra brushes. Those brushes go in here if those wear out over time. Um, and you also will find your chuck, which is the key for opening and closing the jaws on the spindle. So I'll show you how that works. You basically turn this 
and you can see as you turn it the, the chuck is opening. There's a couple things about this spindle that I wanted to show you. Okay, just leave it open a little bit. One of the things I wanted to show you was this has a, a ball set so you can actually if now you don't want to pull this out so hold your fingers on here but you can pull that entire flex shaft out and if you look down in there you'll see there's actually a keyway and then the key on the shaft so anytime you ever take this off and you put it back on make sure that you turn your chuck so that it locks. I'm going to try to get it in there where it's not locked and see if it'll see if you can hear it seat itself I think it just did. There it is. You, you'll feel it kind of spring into place. Just make sure you turn this and lock it in position. Another thing is, I'm going to take this off. Another thing to look at is if you open this up, it's very fine threads on here, so really don't want to pull it. But if you open that up, you can see that there's bearings in here. This whole thing disassembles, and you would be able to take it apart and work on it if you want to. So that's one of the reasons we really like this flex shaft. Okay, so I'm going to put that back together and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, for this step you're going to want to go ahead and grab the bit that was included with your kit and we're going to slide that in there. It can only go so far. Uh, if you plan on cutting deeper foam you might want to leave it out a little bit. And I'm going to go through with the tool and tighten that down. One of the things I've noticed over the years of using these machines is that once you get it semi-tight it helps to spin the bit a little bit. I'm going to leave mine about eighth of an inch like that and then tighten it down. That's the setup right there. It looks good. Okay at this point we're going to go ahead and install our spindle into the spindle attachment and you can drop it down through the top here, but you'd have to take this off and, and take this piece off to get it in there. So what we've done is we've basically brought this to the top of its run just by turning this uh, uh, pulley there. And we're going to insert it through the bottom here. And you notice that I have the bit sliding between the two rollers. Now, I want you to be careful doing it this way, but you see how we have the little notch here for the tool to fit into? We want to keep that facing us so we can change bits easy. And you want to hold this together and keep it nice and tight while you wiggle this into position. And when it reaches these route, these little routed grooves, it becomes a pain to get in there. But once you get it started, you're good. And that is where you want it, right there. The way I line mine up is right even with the top here flush with this top surface like you see here and we have the notch for the tool facing forward so we're going to tighten the knobs down okay that's in there it's nice and tight now's a good time to check to see if you're out of round if you are out of round take this back out and go ahead and reseat those bearings and, and it will straighten that up for you. Okay, so let's take our motor attachment here and we'll go around to the back of the flat printer. First thing you want to do is take this wire tie off. We want to feed our wire through these two holes here, two main holes for the motor. Keeping this towards the back here and the two brush ports side to side, we're going to lower this down. You can see here's where the brushes go in. There's a notch here and there's a notch here. It kind of lines up with it. Now when you get down to this level here, it's going to get kind of tight. Just push it and it should go down and seat right on this lip. Okay, and now you can take your wire and you can actually push it into this wire holder and later we have a clamp that we'll be able to clamp that on with. Let's go around to the front and take your spindle key 
lock it down in here and once again like I said turn it and you'll feel it seat you can actually feel the cable moving when you turn the bit back and forth and you know you have it in there okay that looks good let's move on okay for this step you want to locate your shop vac vacuum hose you notice it has a tapered end on here this end fits right down inside of the vacuum chamber and it actually seats it can only go so far there's pegs down there that stop it but it needs to go down in that hole I'm going to bring it around the back here we're going to go through this hole and then we're going to come back through these holes just work your way through there feed it feed it through and be careful with these because you don't want to break them off we want to get this loop and this loop about the same size something like that Okay, that looks good. Move on to the next step. We have a couple of these Velcro ties. Now, one thing I wanted to mention, if you're anything like me, you like to go through and pull the vacuum hose out and, and vacuum things around here with it. So you might want to leave a little bit more slack, but just for you know building purposes and getting this together, I'm just going to show you how these work. They just basically go on. I have the hose to the side. I'm sorry, I had the flex shaft to the side. Keep it over to the side there. And we're going to install all these Velcro straps. Space them along this hose. When you get down here, you don't, you don't want to kink the flex shaft too bad. So just keep it along the side like we have it. And that looks good. Now once again you can turn this, get it where you want it. You can also turn this part of the vacuum hose and get it where you want it. You can run this slowly side to side. You should have a pivot happening here on the top of your vacuum hose. You can see it turning. Now when it gets over here it gets a little funny so I'm going to try to turn the hose down here. Maybe that will help it. And that looks good. Could straighten that out a little bit more. Maybe even bring it down. But this is something you guys can mess with and, and get the way you want it. But so far that looks really good. Okay, for this step you're going to want to locate your power supply. One thing to double check is make sure that the slide switch is on 115 if you live in the United States. If not, you guys can leave it to 220. Um, you'll notice we have our regular power lead coming off of these three screws. We have a ground, our neutral, and a line. We also have a long wire with a wire block on the end. That'll be for our fan. And we have, we have another long wire with just the end stripped. And this actually powers our board. Both of these are the same voltage coming out of this power supply. The one we're concerned with right now is the one with the wire block. So you're going to need your small flathead screwdriver so you can fit down into these grooves. And I'm going to go ahead and open this door. And you're going to want to locate your fan wires. You notice I have them going under this bar here. So what we want to do is if you look here you have copper and silver. The copper will be the positive and the silver will be the negative. Okay, so I'm just going to put the positive in here, the negative in here. Make sure they're seated down in there. If they're not, and you can also fold the wires over as well. So let's go ahead and hook this up. Okay, that looks good. You can even tighten these down a little bit if you feel it's necessary. Okay, at this point, locate the small nut and bolt assembly. It's the smallest one that you have in that bag. And just push it through the center hole here. 
And what we're going to do is mount this on the back here. If you can see in here, there's a hole right here, right here, that that bolt will slide into. Now, you want it facing just like this, so that the fan wire is facing up, this wire is facing down. We'll later feed that wire around. So what I'm going to do is just, I'm going to switch screwdrivers here and use my Phillips head. I'm just going to push that screw through. And you might have to tighten it through into the wood. And just get it as far as you can in there. And then we'll add the nut to the back. Let's go around to the back. So I've got the nut here. You can see where the stud's coming out. Just going to put it on here. There we go. It doesn't have to be super tight. You come around here. You'll see what it looks like. It's in there. It looks good. So that's basically what you're after. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so we have our fan wire power hooked up. We have our silver gone to black. Our copper gone to red. And now we'll take the other set of leads. This is the power for our driver board. And we have silver, that's going to be our negative, and the copper is going to be our positive. If you look on the board here, you'll see that this is your positive. To the left, there's actually a plus sign there. And this is our negative to the right. Now, to get this connection, you might need to bend the wires up a little bit in a shape like that. Make sure they're twisted together good. And make sure your screws are already loosened to the left. So let's go ahead and hook that up. Okay, these are kind of difficult to get to, but, but uh, with a little patience you can get in there. Just make sure that they're in there good. We're going to go ahead and take our power supply, and we're just going to, with the wires facing up like this, we're just going to tuck these wires up along the side here. And as far as wire management goes, you guys are welcome to do what you want here. I usually put all my wires off to one side here, and then just put the whole power supply in. Try to keep the wires in front of it. Just be careful when you're putting it in that you don't hit your circuit board. Okay, now if you come around this side, you'll see we need to pull some of these wires around and get them tucked up under here. So I'm going to do that real quick. Just tidy up. Okay, that looks good. If you come around here, you can see how we did it. I'm going to take my power cord, run that right through the back here, through the big hole. I'm also going to push that down and under. I'm really using, if you come around here, you'll see I'm really using this as a lip. That looks good. Okay, let's see if our door closes okay. Perfect. Good job. Let's move on. Okay, for this step we're going to install our numeric keypad, which will be our jog control, onto C21. You'll see that it has the hole here. We're going to put our USB, just feed it through the hole. I've already taken the liberty to put the Velcro on the back of mine. And I'm just going to drop this down in here for now. I'll go back and feed that through the back in a minute. Okay, so the object here is to place this where you would feel most comfortable. I left enough room where you can go from here to here if you want. And I'm going to keep mine pretty much even with the top here, I think. Uh, I've already put the Velcro strips on the back here, so I'm just going to apply these. Even the tape on. And remember, leave your wire so it can tuck down between these two ridges here. Which, which ours is right now. So I'll just peel the tape off of the back of these. Align it. That looks good. I'm going to go around here. 
and open the door. But I'm just going to feed it around just like I did the other ones around the bottom here and through the big hole at the bottom. Now, there's a pretty good amount of cord here if you're using a laptop and you have the USB extension, you should have plenty of room to run that. Of course, you can always jog through the software, but this is a nice addition to be able to jog right at the machine. Okay, that looks good. I have plenty of room in the back here. If you are using a desktop, you might need to get a USB extension cable and run, run a little bit longer. And that should work. Let's move on to the next step. Okay, we have our surge protector here, power strip. And really this is a matter of personal preference where you want this. Our cords are right here. I've bundled mine up. I'm going to mount mine right to the table here, I think. Um, so I can just reach the on off button from that side because my computer is going to be over here. One thing to keep in mind though is that our material is going to be moving in and out of here and we're going to have tables on the back here so I would stay away from everything to the left of this would be okay. You could even mount it here if you want it to on the side. I like mine on the table here so I'm just going to go ahead and plug in my spindle and my power supply power and I just have velcro on the bottom here so I can just velcro it right to the table. I can easily reach these cords to unplug the spindle if I just want to run the stepper motors by themselves or whatnot and if I have to I can move this over if it's in the way of the table which I think it will be. I'll bring it over here a little bit more. If you want to locate your USB CNC controller cable. It's just a standard USB printer cable. This box end is the one that we want to go into the controller. If you look through the hole here, you're basically going to face the box ends out and you'll see how it goes in. So just plug that in. And then this end will plug into your computer. Make sure that your power switch is in the off position. And I've plugged the power strip in. I've also plugged the USB from the controller card into my computer and I will plug in the USB from our keypad into the computer and once that's complete let's move on to the next step. Congratulations on completing your Flatburner 3 build. Great job. Really great job, guys. We look forward to seeing all the creations you come up with and just can't wait to see how far we can take this machine's potential. We know you guys are going to have a lot of fun with the Flat Printer 3 project. And we look forward to hanging out with you on the platform. Now the adventure can begin, so get out there and be creative. Remember, you're limited only to your imagination.